Hey, what is up, everyone? It is Rich <laughs> live. All right, today we're going to look at how to draw comics the Marvel way. I um, there's a funny reason why I picked this book for today. My camera is trying to autofocus, which means it's going to be doing the clicky predator thing. Um, uh, last week I actually broke it out for myself for a brief minute. There was I was drawing um, Blaster Kid, and uh, I I had one drawing that um her head feel the, felt a little big to me and um i oh, sorry i'm trying to mute my camera i i um i went to the proportions part of the um the book and i was looking at how john buscema drew um the female character and like how much um between the head size and the shoulder size how much space there was because i was like i i know you you know like a big head will make a body feel small like it, it can really actually really affect the body and then a lot of artists have a tendency to draw big heads but yeah so anyway but um you know the the funny thing is is one of the highest like um uh what would you call it like responded instagram posts that i ever had i mean i had hundreds if not close i don't even know there was there was so many replies was i asked people do you have how to draw comics the marvel way and how many copies of it have you owned or given to other people and i mean it, i never had a response like that on instagram ever i mean there was, i was trying to reply to everyone it was almost impossible i there was hundreds of replies but like just out of curiosity for all of you that are here right now how many copies of Mar how to draw comics the marvel way have you owned or do you own right now i have two two in a digital copy but um I had my original book. I couldn't find it maybe like a year or two ago. And instead of um, uh, like looking everywhere for it, I just ordered another one on eBay and bought a used copy. So I actually have it. I don't know. It's right, oh, it is right here. This wasn't even set up, but I still had it out. Look, <laughs> this is the one that I bought. My, my original copy, I think the cover is ripped a little bit. But you have one copy. Is it, the, is it your OG copy? What year did you buy it? You have one. What year did you get them? Like, how long have you owned it? I got my first one before I broke into comics. I had this and Bern Hogarth um, dynamic figure drawing, and then I had his dynamic anatomy book, and that would have been in the '90s. But those those were my only. Um, I think those were my only two drawing books initially. I have one, same one I've always had. Great book. I've always just looked at it in stores. I still don't own one. It's a good one to have. I have one physical, one digital. Was never a fan of it. It was an obligatory buy. Um, I have one and I gave it to my daughter. Nice. I have one. They were selling ring prints of it at five and below like two years ago. I don't see them being sold there anymore. Oh, nice. Zero. So some people don't own it. I, I look, I'll, I will say this. Um, I still think it actually holds up really good. And um, the I think what's de de deceptive about this book is that a lot of this stuff seems simple and like, oh, like uh, almost like common sense. But I'll tell you, like, honestly, the people that probably hate on the book don't draw well. <laughs> I'm serious. Like, like if, if I took a poll and they didn't know why I was taking a poll and I asked 100 people, like, do you like the book? Do you think it's good? Do you think it's a good source of information? The ones that said no, I would almost I, I'm telling you, I bet most of them aren't very good at drawing because all the best artists that I know still hold the book in pretty high regard and there there is a reason why and it's deceptively simple so one of the reasons looking at it today is to really bring this stuff home and again sometimes what do they say where do you where do you hide something the most hardest place to spot it is in the most obvious places and this that's the information in this book it's so obvious that it, it goes unnoticed <laughs> That would be me rich right so you don't own it or you don't like it never a fan of it and you but you, you but you don't draw well are you serious or are you not i don't know if i've ever seen your art brain i feel like i might have seen it but i'm not sure i'm older i got mine when i got back into drawing about 2015. well 2015 isn't that long ago <laughs> uh don't like it that's fine it shares a lot with the loomis books and i own all of those how many of you own the Loomis books? We could do the Loomis books one day too. Working illustrator, but not into superheroes from Europe. Oh, I see. Yeah, it makes sense. It's it's not so much about drawing superheroes. You'll see. We'll get into it in one second. I'm just going to let everyone catch up. Um, I like the Loomis books. The Loomis books feel almost more dated to me. The Loomis books are good though. I mean, I have them all. 
Um, I've seen too. I don't know. I I could try to get it down. I won't. I don't know if I'll get it down today. I have the famous artist courses. I mentioned it. Uh, I think last week, but I have those three binders with the. It was the course that like uh, Bernie Wrightson went through that had all the like illustrators of the day. But I don't draw. Okay. Definitely. Wait. What was it? Definitely would like to see Loomis stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. I was never into Loomis. I like Bridgman's style more. Just got in watching in double time to catch up. Nice. Well, okay. So look, let's get into this. Um, have you watched the VHS Stanley and Buscema did for the book? I did, you know, and I didn't even know that that ever existed until a couple of years ago. Um, I don't remember how I saw it or like what what put it on my radar, but maybe three years ago I saw it on YouTube and was really blown away. I was like, this exists? Never even heard of this. So it was... It was um, and you could never get behind Bridgman. Brain, I literally have to see your art now. You're you're sending me all kinds of signals that that like if if uh you ever see the Simpsons where Homer tries to go by the RV and when they check Homer's credit and a red light starts flashing and Homer goes, Is that a good light? And he goes, Homer he goes, Mr. Simpson, he goes, Do you ever know a red flashing light to be a good thing? <laughs> Brain, that's what's happening right now for me with what you're saying. I'm worried. <laughs> DM me after this. We need to talk. <laughs> I'm kidding. Now, there's look, there's many paths to get to the promised land. There's a lot of people that follow my channel that probably don't like any of the stuff we're talking about. They think Loomis is sucks. They think Bridgman is a hack. They think the how to draw comics the Marvel way is um a troublesome thing. I posted drawings of the Queen's Gambit in Patreon. Queen's Gambit. Okay, I'll, I'll have to check it out. A lot of professionals will recommend the Marvel book. Yeah, and look, I mean, I don't have any dog in the fight. I just, I think that, that it's a solid book. But all right, so enough jibber-jabber. Let's get into this and we'll look at it. Oh, and, and then by the way, this is the only Rich's Lunchtime Live I'm going to do this week. I've got a super busy week and unfortunately... Uh, it would be impossible for me to do them the other days, but we'll get back to a regular schedule um, next week. And uh, next week, I'm actually going to try to have guests. So there's a possibility that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I'll have guests uh, come by and um, hang and we can look at art that they pick. I thought that that would be really fun. So something a little different. I'm opening Photoshop right now and uh, we'll get it. It definitely touches a lot of important things. Well, and again, I mean, it, it's, it's, I think the deceptive thing with the book is you could look at it and go, I'm going to not open all the pages because there's a lot of um, filler stuff with like just kind of text that we don't need. It'll just make this faster. All right, let me just do this. Um, you know, the drawings are sometimes deceivingly simple. So it's, it's one of those things where, you can you can gloss over something i and i i said this to um i have an office mate named carl standa you'll hear me reference a lot of times carlos was kind of like the godfather at wildstorm where like he he had he just has a personality that he's very like very much like a mentor um and um he's really really solid artist like he's really like he he knows anatomy really good he's like got like just He's he's really like that guy that like if you had a question about art, you'd probably go ask Carlos. Um, and um, I remember as I was getting better at penciling and I I was using a million different books. I didn't focus on how to draw comics the Marvel way. And I wouldn't credit how the how to draw comics the Marvel way is like getting me to where I am today. It's for me, it was sort of like I consumed everything and then just over a period of years was able to like sort of focus in on what I needed to learn or what I wanted to learn and kept pulling things from different things. But anyway, but I remember going into him and saying and going like, man, you just, you just don't realize when you're a, like a beginner or even like low intermediate, how incredibly important, like the first like 10 pages of most drawing books are, you know, it's the most obvious shit. And it's like you, you, there's a point where you turn a corner and you go, God damn, this is some profound shit that if I really get good at this, I unlock the key to like many secrets. So take that for what it's worth. But I'm telling you for someone that's been drawing now for about 14 years, that's where it's at right there, friends. All right, let's go. Come on. <laughs> All right, here's the cover. Classic. Very colorful. It's got Americana written all over it. We've got Thor, Hulk, Spider-Man. 
it's it's got Stanley and John Buscema. We've got Doctor Doom and a guy holding a pencil. It's a nicely drawn hand too, um, and uh, the excitement already is palpable. <laughs> can you palpable it? I can palpable it. All right, so let me see. I'm just pulling up the chat on my phone really quick. All right, let's see. What do we got? Um, grab Sandra Hope as the guest, Rich, if she's available. Of course. Yeah, I'm gonna hit her up. Um, uh, my grandma got me this book, but I never paid attention to it. Just like school should have paid attention. Well, again, I grew up, uh, Joe, what's up, Joe? Um, I grew up on that book that and burn kickstarted everything to me. Um, the chapter that's really needed today for the book is the gesture drawing chapter. Too many artists today don't do gesture drawings. Yeah. I'm, and, and I always love the, um, the poses where he shows like the eight versions of the poses and how, um, uh, you know what I mean? The ones on the edges are the most exciting. It's really, really important. All right. So we've got a beautiful little spot illustration of a guy sitting at like a drafting table. And I mean, this thing just is dripping basic fundamentals. You may look at it as a drawing. All I see is him showing you that these are rectangles. These are cylinders. We've got, you know, a, a little bit of perspective going on. The guy is at like sort of a dynamic pose. He did interesting things with the feet. I mean, there's all kinds of tells. The cylindrical like wheels so you know this is this is essentially an example of what they're trying to sort of like instill in you in the book you could if you could draw this out of your head you could draw just about any kind of comic book drawing you want you could draw the coolest robots you could draw superheroes it's all john buscema is basically he's he's secretly telling you good things all right tools so now and I did I did a video that I didn't upload uh, last week of this. So I did about a 45 minute video that I that I deleted. Um, but uh, so now the only thing that's different now is obviously, you know, a lot of people lay things out digitally. You know, you have the opportunity to use Procreate. You could use Clip Studio. You could use Photoshop, Corel Painter. Uh, I mean, you could be working in Blender. There's a million different ways to lay stuff out. So if you're going to work traditionally, the tools might come in handy. I'm not going to really like spend a lot of time talking about the tools, um, but they they give you a little bit of a lowdown of that. They talk about the paper that comic book artists use, plate finish versus uh, whatever the other one's called. I can't even think of it. They show you a little bit of like, you know, you know what the terminology is for things on the pages. It's all interesting stuff. You know, I mean, anytime you get into any hobby, there's sort of like a dialect included with it. And the more of the dialect and sort of minutia that you learn, you kind of feel like you've aligned yourself with it. You know, whether it's some trend on YouTube and, you know, like I'm really into watching competitive eating now. So I watch beards, beards, meats, and I don't even know food. <laughs> there's a whole thing. Any new hobby, you know, you got to learn all the minutia. It's part of the fun of it. So, all right, I'm going to get into this. All right, talks a little bit about panels, types of panels, you know, establishing shots, long. You've got bird's eyes view, worm's eye view, all that things. Yeah, good drafting table is definitely nothing to sneeze on or sleep on, I should say. Um, you know, there's there's a really good table. I think James Smith actually has it, but like Aaron Brothers and other ones sell it. It's a glass table that I think has one drawer, um, and um, they're not that expensive. They're like two hundred bucks, but um, it's a nice small table that you can use as a light box. And um, yeah, we call those at Wildstorm. Everyone always had a tabaret, the like side table. I have one right here in, in my office too. All right, we've got you know some different panel things. Again, this isn't really like, I mean, it's all good stuff, silhouettes. Really, you know, I always say like, you know, if you're a fan of Joe Matarera, one thing that you should notice on a lot of Joe Matarera's stuff is Joe does great silhouettes. I mean, he uses it quite frequently. In fact, uh, you could argue in Battle Chasers, sometimes there's a silhouette on like every single page. So a silhouette's a powerful tool. Bird's eye view, again, we've got worm's eye view. Worm's eye means very low, like to the ground, where like literally like the horizon line um, can be uh, the eye level, like like at the feet, or you can be up above a scene. And um, you've read this book like three times. Beer meets food. Yeah, I love his channel. He's my new hero, my new YouTube hero. I play guitar and I watch him eat food <laughs> at night when I'm done working. All right, this is beautiful. This is like, this is such a wacky piece of uh, machinery, but you know, again, it, it's kind of like that scene of um, the guy at the table, 
this is like the nuts and bolts of really, really great drawing. Dr. Doom is standing at a very cool angle. His legs are in this very like bowed sort of position. His feet are firmly planted on the ground. He's got nice dynamic hands. The cape is looking cool. And this piece of machinery has got all the fundamental core shapes, the primitives that you, you're going to need to master, which is you're going to need to be able to master cylinders. You're going to need to be able to master spheres. And I and I and the terminology is incredibly important. When people draw flat, instead of drawing a cube, they're really drawing a square. When they draw an eye and an eye looks flat, they didn't draw a spherical eye. They drew a circle eye. They're 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 drawing on a flat. Their 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 mind hasn't turned form into form yet in the drawing. They can see form. A, an amateur artist or someone that doesn't draw at all can look at this and see form. An artist that actually draws form and is really focused on geometry you know, sees the, I can never remember what it's called, the donut shape. There's a fancy name for the donut shape. But I mean, this is, a, it's a very simple donut shape that's just been carved out with like rectangles and uh, like reverse ellipses. But all this stuff is is super important. I got a tilting glass table recently. It's pretty good, but on a cold day, my wooden one is best. Oh, I could see the Taurus. Thank you. Yeah, the Taurus shape. Um, you know, these are, this is all really, really great shit. Now we're going to get into the drawing stuff. This was all preamble. So, you know, look, if you've, if you've ever drawn through this book, you've drawn every one of these drawings. I've done it. Other people have done it. I've done it in the Loomis book. I've, I mean, like, I'm not even kidding when I say I've done like thousands and thousands of studies. I don't even know how many studies I've done so many studies that like, literally I've studied everything. I feel like sometimes it's not true, but I mean, I would I would just draw thousands and thousands of things too much. <laughs> I was stuck in a loop. But um yeah, you know, I mean, this is where it's at. This is like when I when someone can't draw a figure, I I did four hours of lessons and reviews already this morning. I had a guy that had a character that was like had been killed and they were laying on the ground and he was trying to draw a leg that was broken, but underneath the body. And I immediately started with cylinders and stuff like that. And then I went in and I put the skeleton for him. And between the skeleton and simple cylinders, I was able to show him examples of how the leg really should have gone underneath it. The, the skeleton helped the most, though, because once you place the kneecap, then you, there's only so much rotation the lower part of the leg has. But, you know, he was having a lot of trouble drawing cars. He had a, he had a police car that was parked in a, a field. And he, he, it was almost at this angle, funny enough, really close to this angle, actually. And his police car was too narrow. You know, his, his car, let me, I'm, I've got a pencil, but his, his police car was like this. He didn't have the center line very good. And so it wasn't like running through the middle of the car and, and stuff was just getting super funky for him. But, you know, another book I would recommend alongside of this, if you want to get into the nuts and bolts of perspective is Scott Robertson. Scott Robertson's Nomon DVDs are great. You can find one, there's a, someone on YouTube has uploaded one of the Scott Robinson and Scott Robertson has a YouTube channel too. But look at Scott Robertson because the, the better that you get at this stuff, the better you're gonna be at figure drawing too. I still can't construct a figure using basic forms. Well, and Dan, then th that means that you definitely can't construct any sort of objects because it's the same, you know? A figure is no different than any of this other stuff that we're looking at right now. What ends up happening is, um, and you'll see that, and in the, in the, you'll see this in the next chapter, is when he gets into the figure stuff. Because Buscema has a very, very lively silhouette, like this stuff. You know, these these really stretched out shapes. Like, this is this is a big deal. You know, you want to have the um, this kind of stuff going on, you know, where you've got lots of things going back into space or forward and the more that you can have things you know like if you want to have a hand coming like super forward you know these shapes are going to get you there like so fast but if if you you know if you can't if you can't manage those core shapes it's going to be really really difficult for you to even set up poses like this to start to feel it um but it's it's totally worth the effort and it's weird too because there's a seesaw effect that happens with this stuff where if you if you set up your figures with this stuff they'll start to get stiff it's just kind of the way that it goes it's hard it's hard to turn this into figures but if you can take 
looser drawings and then blend it with this. And like I said, for me now, um, like when I put in like the hips, we'll say as an example, like the hips here, I'll actually stick in the, the leg bone. So when I'm drawing the actual leg, I'll go in and actually draw the skeleton. And the skeleton makes it a lot easier to put on the anatomy to the leg, like really, really fast. I can go in and just knock out anatomy in like seconds. So, you know, it's one of those things where it's like three ideas come together into one lighting stuff. Most common question I get asked again and again and again is I don't know how to put shadows on my stuff. or I don't know how to render stuff. Hey, what's up, Brandon? Um, and, uh, you know, once you have those simple forms down, if you can light simple forms, like literally, like if you can light a cylinder, if you can light, the thing is, is look, <laughs> I'm going to show you how fast this is. All right. Here's an arm, you know, like that's an arm. If I have a light source here, it's going to light up these edges. This stuff on this side is going to be dark. When you render over a form, your lines are going to go around a form. You don't put straight lines over a form. You don't you don't render if this is an arm we'll say again i'll just do like this if if you've got this you're not going to put lines across two planes what i mean by that is like you're never going to render over an elliptical shape that comes into a cylinder because once you cross a, an easy way to explain it is like this okay like if this is an edge on the body this could be the elbow all right this is this is your elbow and this is the, the the arm okay if you start to do cross hatching on over a plane you flatten that plane at that point finch has a great rendering video on proko's channel yeah no finch does great shit, you know and and i really um i really like what proko does too so here's a little bit more of the technology again it's just taking the sphere cylinders and some nice rectangles and being able to draw this and look if if you if you really want to work on your art and you feel like you don't know what you're doing try to draw some stuff like this there there were these things when i was a kid called habit trails and a habit trail is basically like a thing for a hamster and so you get like the main body of the habit trail is like an aquarium shape and you could buy all these tubes for it so for your habit trail you get all these like joints and you can you, you can put more tubes on it and your hamster can run around these tubes but you know sit in a sketchbook and try to draw these things you know can you can you have stuff in perspective you know can you find a vanishing point here can you find a vanishing point here if it's three point perspective you can start to have it go like this um and um it the really really powerful exercises that you can do on the go i always talk about um, how important it is um, for people that um, want to draw is to sketch stuff that you can take with you. This stuff is stuff that you can take with you and you can practice anywhere and you don't need reference. All you need to do is know that you're going to be drawing rectangles, cylinders, and spheres, and then lighting them in the most simplest thing. You can see on this figure, he's got light coming from here. He has light coming from this angle because the cylinder, I'm doing this with a mouse now because um, I put my stylus down, but because the light's coming from these two things, it puts a shadow in the middle of what? This cylinder, you know? This is a spherical head. The light's coming from behind it, and it puts a shadow on the head like that. Now, the more detail that you have on the head, now all of a sudden you're lighting these other shapes, which like your nose has got some rectangles in it. Your nose has got, you know, a little bit of a round quality, maybe to the tip of the nose. So it all becomes pretty logical, to be honest. I'm talking fast because we have a lot to get through. So chapter three, perspective. Perspective is something that terrifies people. They think that it only relates to buildings. Um, and uh, yeah, get back to work. This video is going, this this uh, this video isn't going anywhere. Um, uh, you know, perspective is something that I, I, I consider drawing perspective, drawing faces and drawing hands. Really a lot of parts of drawings are like this, but it's an accumulative effect it's very rare that you're going to sit down and you're going to learn perspective from one pass like everybody's had good intentions and picked up a perspective book and tried to like read it through and you get like 60 pages into it or 30 pages into it or 80 pages into into it and you kind of hit a wall you either you either understood everything up until that point or it just becomes overwhelming 
and that's kind of the way it goes and if you're tenacious enough you'll return to it again and again and again and maybe most of the time you start at the beginning of the book and try to work your way through but ultimately at some point you'll go i think i kind of got this stuff in the beginning of the book let me try to work on three-point perspective or let me try to work on like um staircases or something like that and at some point you'll just kind of realize all of a sudden you'll go you know what i kind of know i kind of know how to do perspective after primitive forms, the bits in between, like the knee and elbows, became a hassle for me. Still are to some extent. Yeah, make sure that you um, like for elbow. I always recommend like um, Will Weston, but but you know, think of the elbow as a wedge like this. You know, like that's the elbow shape, and then you can kind of like build the arm off of it like this. You know, and then your you know, as long as you can feel the side planes of stuff, you, know, you can put your tricep here this you've got you know this comes over um you know and then your hand wedge you know you've got the hand wedge is going to be you know something like this like this but your hand can rotate left and right your hand can also swing forward and back so there's a range of motion that this has but yeah i mean for a basic elbow shape i mean you can kind of use that you know and then just remember that you've got bones that hit your wrist so and this is why I tell people too, you know, people that want to use a lot of 3D models and stuff like that, it's much faster to be able to learn how to do this. It might not seem it on the front end, but I'm I really promise you that like when you get this stuff down, you you would be 10 times faster to just draw it than to like set up a model and try to work it out that way. And then on top of it, you don't really understand it well enough to be able to render it anyway. There's too much information with 3D models for people that don't know how to draw. I had someone that was taking lessons from me that was using 3D models and they were trying to like ink over the 3D model shading, but because they lack the the knowledge of the the overall what they were trying to accomplish, it be was overwhelming I think to them because it's too much information. I'm amazing. Oh, thanks Mick. <laughs> I'm trying it's I feel like I'm really rushing because this is like like it's like Oh, I'm going to explain how to draw everything in a 30 minute video. It's like kind of impossible to do, but look, Mick, the only reason that I like, I failed so many times and, and got frustrated and quit. I mean, I've, I've quit drawing more times than probably anybody. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Like I would, I would, I would see progress and I would get frustrated or I would want to learn more. And, um, you know, it just, I would constantly hit walls. So look, I, I actually still think that this is a little bit challenging doing doing the wheels, although it's it's pretty intuitive, which is, you know, you're going to put your you're going to put your shape in perspective, you're going to find a center point of it. And then you know, you can you can ellipse from that meaning that it, it sort of fits in here. And then you've got your back one. But what I would recommend for this is if you're having trouble drawing tires and things like that, definitely look at the Scott Robertson videos, because he he really breaks this stuff down. And although it's it's frustrating and you can feel impatient learning it it's worth doing it so that you're able to i was going to try to rotate this let me turn this sideways for a sec um um yeah this will work it, it's worth learning to do this now look in clip studio you can set up you know you can use the ellipse tools and stuff like that and get accomplish this the other thing that you can do in things like clip studio is you can actually um you know you can grab this and just put it in perspective with the transform tool. So that's always an option to, um, edit. you know, I mean, you can, you can sort of, you can fuck with your things like this. I would, if I was going to do that though, I would do it. Um, uh, what would you call it? Like, um, free transform probably, but you know what I mean? You could create a ground plane like this. The thing is you can, you can do this just on your own. You don't need, you don't really need to um you don't really need to do this it's not that hard to just draw it from the get-go so don't be intimidated by perspective it's just a it's it's kind of boring but the results are exciting you know all this gritting shit is obnoxious but it's part of the it's part of the thing so essentially it was funny as adam hughes drew this thing for amanda connor when i was at wildstorm and he showed how to draw a house for her but you know when you oh god i don't know if i want to get into a lesson for each one of these things this is going to be a lot essentially what this is oh, sorry my pen is like so say you want to you want to subdivide this once you pick one thickness you just keep sort of you 
you keep doing this, you run or hold on, you do this. Yeah, and then um it, it just it keeps you keep running your line through it and you can you can figure this out. Um I don't I like I said I don't want to I don't want to get into a tutorial for each of these. I'm trying to go backwards. Here we go. Um so let's look at this really quick. All right. So suppose you want to divide a wall into five equal parts, but to complicate the process, draw in perspective. So you're gonna you're gonna create this, and then uh, do they do? Oh, I thought it was. I thought you did this. Isn't it this? This. Or you could just eyeball it. <laughs> If you only have to do five planes, I would recommend eyeballing it. But anyway, but this stuff can be tedious, but it's necessary to learn. All right, we got these. So some perspective shots. I, it's funny, someone mentioned Joe Casada. When I think of three-point perspective, I always think of Joe Casada for some reason. Just pick your vanishing points. Thanks, Amato. Yeah, for whatever reason, Joe Casada is like my three-point perspective guy. It's funny, but I, I really do. Um, he was the person that I saw using it the most. Maybe it was because when I was learning that stuff, he was on Daredevil, so he was using a lot. Fake it till you make it. Yeah, no, it's really true. I didn't want to say that in the video, but I mean, honestly, if you if you know what your vanishing point is, is you can literally just sort of fake fake the you know like Buscema didn't. Buscema didn't grid out this this fence here or Kirby, whoever drew this originally. Um, they're just eyeballing it. So eventually you'll be able to eyeball it. You can see in this sketch, they sort of show it, but these lines don't match up with what they put in. Aaron Weisenfeld had a pretty interesting trick with perspective that kept his stuff a little looser. He would create the guidelines and then he would freehand stuff. All right, so dynamic figures. First, he's going to show you how to draw figures and a little bit of proportions. Now, this book doesn't go into to extensive depth on how to draw figures, but there's like there's some decent information. I always recommend this. Is I say like right now, the better drawing books, in my opinion, are Marcos Mateo Mestri. Any of the framed books, Frame Perspective One, Frame Perspective Two, Frame Dink. Um, the other one is Framed Drawing Techniques. I would say the Michael Hampton. Uh, figure drawing design and invention are really good figure drawing books and then um uh will weston instagram and the, the between that you, you've got a really good foundation on top of probably the stuff that you're already using and there could be more if you guys have recommendations let me know so we've got a really really beautiful reed richards thing he's showing you the proportions and height of you know the head count for the figure to make it big really really good stuff and again you know the reason that I broke this book out was literally this drawing right here. I wanted to see how much space he was putting between her head and her shoulders on a drawing that I was doing. Um, and I came and I looked at it and his head, the, her head was bigger than I thought. And this was more narrow than I thought. But um, it's still, I think it still helped me. I just felt like I was drawing my heads a little too big and it was bugging me. So I wanted to check with a comic book style drawing. I think what ends up happening is if you draw heads off of bodies a lot, like practice heads on their own, when you start to put them on bodies, you have a tendency to make them big. So this is an example of a hero, like a hero's proportions versus sort of like a athletic person. You're not that late. How to draw comics, drawing, sketching objects, Scott Robinson, Thomas Bertling. I'm gonna, I, I know the name Thomas Bertling. I'm gonna have to check that out. Oh, yeah, the David Chelsea book. I have that. In fact, that was the book that I, when I was talking about reading a perspective book, that's one of the books that I've actually read quite a bit of, um, you know, and, and I attempted it many times before I ever got through it. So now he starts to show you a little bit about like what makes it more exciting, like the, the you know, like the dynamics of it. So Finch does some really, really good examples of this on his channel that I would highly, highly recommend. He's got some videos, but like, there's nothing wrong with this Dr. Doom drawing. And I think they even say that in this thing, like, this is fine. You know, like you could draw this and people would like it. It's, it's got some dynamics to it, but you can see that this one's ratcheted up. He brings the legs out a bit more, you know, his head, well, his head is almost at the same exact angle. The, the arms feel a little more desperate. This one's going back a little bit further into space. So he's got some nice overlap here. But um, in, in this hand, does it turn more? No, not really. 
But um, yeah, this one just got a little more torque to it, you know. There's a little more aggression in his fingers too, just the tiniest bit. It, it's funny because I know Joe is here, but I I was I did a review for some this morning, and it was a woman was holding a sword, and there was you know like a lot of stuff going on. Her hand was very relaxed for the situation, and I told him that he needs to really ratchet up the the tightness of the grip. Got my Tash and Frazetta book yesterday. Nice. Oh, took notice of his big head phase. Yeah, a friend of mine, Jackson Taylor, got the got the Frazetta book too, just literally in a, a couple of days ago. They must be shipping right now or something. This is a great thing, man. Nice big juicy shapes, delicious. All right, let's see. Kingpin looking cool, chunky. Now they don't really get into hands that much in this this book. Uh, for hands, I would say that um, it, as much as I consider it a quote-unquote dangerous book, I did a video on it called Ber Bern Hogarth, Drawing Dynamic Hands. It's a dangerous book. One thing that Hogarth does really good is he he shows you these kind of forms so that you're able to draw fingers at lots of different angles. And this this will definitely help you be able to draw fingers at just about any sort of angle that you want. So if you if you want to get into drawing hands and fingers and stuff like that, it's worth trying to understand like this type of stuff. I hope you can see this. But I they're almost like a bowling pin sort of shape. It's like this. But these are very poseable. Again, you can you can put them back. You can have them, you know, come across your figure like this. And they're not bad to set up fig fingers. The other one that I use is I actually use a bone shape. So I'll actually draw like the bone like that. And then I can put the finger over the bone shape. But I, I anyone that follows my Patreon knows, I call this like the dog bone. But you can, the dog bones are very, very poseable. You know, you can go in and put this stuff in your drawings super, super fast. And they're very, very poseable. You know, and then just remember that your thumb comes out at a different angle. And you got the thumb wedge that sits like right there on your hand. So hands are hands are tough, but hands actually are very rewarding. I I, I actually really enjoy drawing hands and um, all the hard work that you pay with uh, you know to put into learning to draw hands are nice. Now this never worked for me. This is something that I can't. I I don't have any luck really setting up figures this way. But if you do, then more power to you. Look, Chuck says, sorry, guys and girls, most of the how to draw comics art books are nothing more than just a gimmick because there's never enough to learn to draw comics. Do you draw comics, Chuck? Chuck, Chuck might draw comics. I don't know. Um, I mean, uh, essentially, you know, again, when people ask me what my favorite drawing books are, I tell them to get any drawing book that you think looks cool. Oh, Dustin. Thanks, Dustin. Rich, thanks for all the great content and fun times. It's so fun to chill and talk nerd and art on all your streams. And thanks to Kelsey as well. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, but um, yeah, I, I tell people that like, like, you know, there's books that people recommend, you know, again, Bridgman is very popular. Loomis is real popular. But ultimately, what you want to do is just gravitate towards the drawing books that actually look cool to you. If, if you like the, um, uh, what's his name? It's the the other like the the two the two lord of the rings artists one of them not 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 lee but the other one i can't think of his name i'm looking to see if i have it on my shelf uh but he has a like how to draw fantasy book you know whatever you like get those because that's you're gonna you're gonna be more inclined to learn from it but yeah this technique never worked for me there's not enough information down and ultimately these round shapes end up being like um I, I, you i want to know the direction of my hips i want to know the direction of the torso and so when i don't see that then it, the i don't think it's very useful you know what i mean i want to know i want to know what angle these things are at so that when i'm drawing them that i have the twists and turns right you know what i mean and again for me i put in the kneecap and then i put the hip bone on like that because when you have your kneecap in and you have this like this 
there's just no doubt where your anatomy is going to go on this leg. You can punch it in so fast. The other thing I tell people too, and I do actually recommend this, is when you draw arms and poses, do not draw the shoulder pad first, whatever that's called, the deltoid. Put the bone in and then put the direction that you want the arm at. If you want it to go back, if you want it to come forward, whatever it is, but make sure that you draw the bone and then that, and then again, whatever angle you want it at. If you want it forward, if you want it going back and then you can put the shoulder on it afterwards later but yeah the order that you place stuff down can really make a big difference in the success of your drawing and also it'll make the musculature interact with the things because essentially once you start putting muscles on things you are dealing with stretch stri stretch and squish more oh and then james 20 super chatted too james oh you did you one up him i went again <laughs> james you're too funny um this book is such a great basis for comic art jack ham oh jack ham thank you for saying that joe so adam hughes and i both love the jack ham it's the brown book drawing the head and figure i've had that book for years before i met adam and i was so excited when adam said that that was one of his favorite like learning to draw books again it doesn't cover everything but you know you 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 find these little pockets of information in these different books i love all the how to draw manga books i have probably 20 of the different how to draw like you know manga books you know uh, all the different ones fighting poses motorcycles how to draw people sitting in classrooms it's all it's all interesting one of their 12 principles of animation there's uh, squash and stretch yeah and again once you get your structure down that's where you really really have to start to stretch and squish um your anatomy based on the pose because you know like obviously on a leg like this this stuff is going to start to to really pinch you know this is going to be more relaxed but you know as these things start to bend these muscles get pushed up onto each other so that's where you get this nice bulge <laughs> you want the bulge right and like look at the calf on this this leg right here how rounded it is because it's being just it's being really crunched under there Busem is great, man. He's so good. Uh, what is it? The Christopher Hart ones. No, no, no. I don't like the Christopher Hart books. I hate to be negative about them. The, the Christopher Hart books got better as they went along because he started bringing in um, better artists to do the, the examples. Because there's one that has Dan Norton and J.J. Kirby art um, that was maybe done in the like later 90s. But the first couple of Christopher Hart books, I don't, I don't particularly like. It's a little too generic um, for my tastes, um, but I have seen those books. But his books did get better as he went along. He has two books out that um, came out not too long ago that are, I think, dynamic figure drawing ones. Let's see. Actually, um, Mitch Bird. I've heard of the Mitch Bird books. I've never seen those, but um, I, I have heard of those. This is nice. Nice Spider-Man. Nice dynamic pose. But yeah, I would say that I start my poses more like this than, than like this. Uh, first thing I'll draw with just about any figure for me, if I, I, I've explained this on Patreon, if I'm drawing a figure standing in a room, I'll always block in the hips first. And I'm already picturing the floor plane, but I'll, I draw that first and then I'll, I'll do the pose, whatever I'm going to do. You know, if I'm, if I'm going to have someone standing in a room, if it's an action pose, I'm usually putting in the torso first. So I'll put this in and then I start to think about the rest of the body you know but I'm, I'm still picturing a ground plane underneath this character there's a ground plane here the legs are going to be on the ground plane he can be standing here running this direction but um yeah i don't know why but i i didn't learn it from any book but if i'm if i'm drawing a room full of characters i start with the hips and then draw the legs in which is probably stupid, but it's just the way that I do it. And then I'm picturing the ground plane underneath it. I kind of, that's, that's one thing that I actually want to kind of sort of like double check and see like how you're supposed to do it. But these are great. And this is real common. How many of you start off with a real sketchy drawing like this? Cause that was, that was my go-to way that I would do early on. And I could never finish the drawings. I didn't know what to do with the sketch when it was that sketchy. Hogarth method. Is that Hogarth? I, that might be where I got it. I don't even know. That would be funny if it's Hogarth. Interesting. I'd have to check that out. But yeah, how many of you start with like a sketchy doodle? 
you that's you yeah see that was me for the longest time and i just like i said i had so much trouble finishing drawings like this that i had to put in a little bit more of that other information and you know i've i've said this um in more patreon videos and youtube videos but i've i've really been studying the skeleton the last like 4 or 5 months and that's helped me a lot but i wouldn't i wouldn't recommend that early on i think that's to get to advanced drawing somewhere in your intermediate phase you can obsess on the skeleton and a little bit more and it it, it seems to um make my figures better i start with stick figures right yeah I, I wish I could do that, but I can't. But this was me for a long time, is that. And then I would just get lost, lost in the details. J Dan Warren Johnson draws really sketchy like that to start. It's crazy to watch. Yeah. Go for more solid shapes and silhouettes. Yeah, and silhouette is really important, too. You're absolutely 1,000% right with that. You want, a, you want a cool silhouette like this. This is a nice silhouette. You take this figure out, you've still got a very, very dynamic pose. And this is this is very, very cool. I love, I love, I love when when you get to see this stuff start to lift. You know, he really, really pushed this up. McFarlane will do that with a lot of his poses too, where you get you get the side of the body right here. But because this is lifting up, you start to get like a side plane right here, which is the the back, but it's lifting. But McFarlane will do that. And then that's so cool. He turns the hips towards us. And this leg is coming forward. And then going back. I mean, that's just like, oh, man, so good. And then this overlapping the hand. I mean, that is just money right there. That's such a good pose. And even this, this going back into space. And you can see, look, there's the elbow wedge that I was talking about. Let me remove some of this shit really quick. So here's his elbow wedge right here, that shape that I was talking about, that, like this. It's right there. And that, you get your triceps, this, this. Then again, you wanna make sure that you feel the sides of your, your thing. Hand wedge goes in and you're on your way to the promised land. The promised land. You start your figures with forms. See, Chuck is snarky. Do you really start them with forms? Like what forms? Like the like the basic forms? I think that's a good way to start, to be honest. And you're filling space too, which is good. Ah, this. I love this. So for me, my poses all end up right here. Nine times out of 10, even if I start with the intention of this or this, by the time I finish my drawing, they're right here in the middle, which is the weak and not bad every single time. But I'm aware of that. So what I have to do is I have to go. What I'm doing is I'm straightening up my forms. You know, I, I start off with the best intentions. I'm like, this is going to be a dynamic. I'm going to have the head down here. This is going to be like this. I'm going to put the legs out here. And I don't know what happens, but as this drawing gets tighter, the guy starts to stand up more straight it all starts to go away so what i've talked what i've talked to myself into now is that i only study these poses i don't even worry about the ones that are in the middle anymore i'm only looking to learn this stuff so the new information that i'm acquiring instead of shooting in the dark and trying to experiment and see if i can get these figures to be more like this is i'm focusing 100 percent on these types of figures and memorizing these types of poses and that way that I have more dynamic poses just to begin with. Like, I don't even, I don't even start with anything like this. Do you have any thoughts on the Bart Sears Brutes and Babes anatomy book? I, Bart Sears is a really good artist. I'm not a hundred percent sure I've seen that book, but I mean, if you like the look of his aesthetic, then I would say that, you know, that might be something for you. It wouldn't be for me to say if it's the best book for you. And again, I'm not as, I, I do think I have it, to be honest. Um, I think I vaguely remember picking it up. Maybe like if, if it's if it's an old book, I may have it somewhere, but I never used it. Um, and I, in fact, it's got his, his assistant does drawings in it too, right? The, the guy that um, he's a, he's on, he's online now. I can't think of his name. The, who was Bart Sears um, kind of partner in crime back then? Someone will know who I'm talking about. He's a comic skate guy now, I think. I, I can't think of his name. Uh, anyway, but um, 
you know, again, I, I think it's it's an aesthetic. Bart Sears is very stylized, like Bern Hogarth is really stylized. So if you like that look, then you'd be good. Andy Smith, right? Andy Smith. Andy Smith and I think Bart worked on Bart's book together. I could be wrong on that, but I think that the how to draw brutes and babes was both of them. I could be wrong. They were very synonymous for a long time, though. It's funny. All right. Again, this is just so much better, obviously. And then this is the shit that I end up drawing. You know, it's so frustrating. I, I, I really, really try to pull my figures to these dynamic poses. And I swear, by the time I'm finished with them, they're not probably this goofy, but damn close. They're somewhere, they're somewhere in between here. But that's not bad. I don't want not bad. I want the cool, cool poses. So acknowledge your weak points and just know that, that that's a tendency you have. Again, this is really great. They compiled them into the books. Okay. Do you use a mannequin to start your figure like boxes? Yeah, sometimes I do. I mean, definitely. I mean, you know, if I'm doing a chest shape, my chest shape will be more like this. You know, it's more of a chest shape. I don't, I don't so much do this anymore, but that was how I learned it. So what I would do, this is funny is so, um, online they had the, um, oh God, what was it called? Pose maniacs. And it had that weird, like anatomy figure. And so, so like on pose maniacs, they would, they would have, um, these characters like in different poses, you know, whatever they were doing, I'm, I'm just going to draw something really fast. So like they have a character, you know, like this and the and the then and back then the 3d models were actually kind of stiff so it was they weren't that good but like anyway like so say it would be a pose like this um you you um i that was how i would study the figures so no matter what i was looking at i would always try to find the um the the boxes for the figure so let me show you on these two figures right here that are that um i'm just gonna erase this really quick i'll show you what i mean so like for a pose like this what i'm trying to find is i'm trying to find the hip carriage like that and then i'm trying to find this box here so once i can see that then i can kind of like start to work out the pose you know what i mean so hopefully you can see that and then for this pose, like this is this box. And then here's the hip box. So there's that. You know what I mean? And then you can build your poses like from that. But yeah, so that was how I that was how I started to learn to do the, the hips and the, the chest. That was exactly what I would do. I would do it with photos where I would look at a photo. And I would just go, okay, like, where's the shoulder box? All right. And then the hips are at this angle, um, you know, whatever it was, you know, and then if you wanted to put the legs on it, you could put the legs on it and, you know, you might have an arm going back this way. You might have another arm coming across the body here. This arm might go back. The hand might be here. This one might, you know, this is not a great pose, but. You know what I mean? Like this kind of stuff. And then you can lean this box down. When you start working with these simple shapes, now all of a sudden it's not so scary to like turn a figure where it's it's leaning forward a little bit more. Sorry, fuck that up. Um, you know, it's not it's not as weird to start to lean them over, you know, because you're dealing with a simpler shape. <clears throat> okay, so look, we're almost at an hour. Yeah, we're five more minutes. Let's just, we'll start to hustle. I'm going to show less examples and just more shit from the book. Um, let's see what we got here. These are good. Man, these figures are so awesome. But again, is this a perfect book? No, because it doesn't have enough information, I think, to get you fully through um, all of the drawing challenges. But I think if you had 10 drawing books, this would be a good one to have with your um, thing. 3D models have come a long way. I'm basically making virtual photographs. Well, with AI too, I mean, the thing is, is now, you know, you can literally just pull up basically ZBrush quality AI models. I mean, in another in another year or two, it's just going to be bananas. It already is, but um, it's only going to get better. So, you know, you've got, because eventually, I think, well, I mean, eventually you'll be able to post stuff i mean you already can kind of with ai but i mean you'll be able to really create any kind of reference you want with ai 
and 3D models and all that stuff, like combining it together, there's going to be some really, really powerful reference tools. God, this figure is great right here. This is so good. Um, but yeah, like even for poses like this, it's not a bad idea if you really don't feel like you're confident with your drawings is is try to find try to find these um the the boxes with them you know figure out where the butt is where the back is and put it in and then you can even you know put in the cylinders for the legs but make sure they're going the right direction this one's coming back towards us this one's going out away from us this is coming back towards us the foot is here this one's coming back towards us um it'll it'll really help you um with your forms and you've got the nice curve of the back there this is good this one is at like this angle basically and the hips are way down you know and it'll surprise you too you know you'll look at a dynamic pose and you go wow i didn't really realize that the hips were at this angle you know or whatever it is this one's really crazy with the the body like this and then this is turned this is actually a really nice little subtle thing if you look right here the body is actually turned so you're seeing the side plane right here and then this is more flat sorry this is like i did bad line let me uh this is more at this angle and then this is turned super cool so you've got the butt and then the back head poking through a little bit oh man so good busem is a stud man i really wish that um i could have met him Finch has those form lines in his detail. And yeah, I really need to go back and actually go through some of David's tutorial videos, to be honest. There's you're, there's a gold mine of information in David's videos that could help anyone at any level, to be honest, because he's he's done it all. I mean, David has drawn professionally now for probably close to 25 years, if not 25 years. He's done thousands and thousands of pages. I mean, there's there's literally nothing that he couldn't draw so if you want to learn from someone learn from someone that's got as much experience as a finch i like to use a bazooka to hunt squirrels i don't know what that's in reference to you could use a bazooka to hunt squirrels this wouldn't be a lot left <laughs> they're not good eating after that look the reality is is you just got to do whatever it is to get it get you to your art there's a lot of really great cartoony artists that don't put as much detail you know that's the thing too is you could take any of these basic setups for these figures and put a completely different amount of finish on them imagine john paul leone finishing this drawing versus steve mcniven versus adi granov versus simon bianchi or gabrielle delato or phil hester or ryan souk you know each person's got kind of a different polish but ultimately everyone is kind of building off of these you know hopefully dynamic forms and solid shapes mignola yeah david was just as nice and authentic in person as he seems on streams it was a pleasure to meet him yeah no david is a good guy most definitely i mean the fact that he's that he's doing the youtube channel i mean is that's a lot of work and um it shows that he's pretty open to helping other artists. I mean, very much so because, you know, some people are a little more, they don't want the competition, you know, in particular, because I mean, David's channel definitely encouraged a lot of people to draw like David, which, you know, can be a little, I would imagine a little, like it could be flattering, but could also be a little weird in particular, if someone started getting really good at your style, like that could be a little scary. <laughs> it's like, shit this guy's trying me better than me not saying that it ha has happened but you know what i mean like that would be weird oh it's a good spidey right there sam keith barth right yeah but i mean again everyone has different things and and look the, the great thing about these core shapes too is that you can um uh, they can have different sizes so this is i'm trying to think what this chapter is this is layouts foreshortening oh okay you know, and, and foreshortening really is, you know, it's just taking those forms and manipulating them. Uh, overlap, it really helps the foreshortening. But this is this stuff is not that bad. 
and it's really not that bad when you can when you draw your um forms like this and this is even a different kind of mannequin that he's using here what's nice about this one to me is that the head the blockiness of the head helps you know where the underneath of the chin is again i did a, a lesson this morning and a person they had a back view of a character and they didn't re i don't think they fully realized that they were showing the underneath of the chin in their their drawing but i showed them that it was because he had drawn facial stubble but he didn't realize that there was the the way that the chin the carriage underneath the jaw you know this hooks back up into your jaw so the, you know if you look at a skeleton you've got this sort of like this under your neck you know and this goes up to your ear and this is where your like nose is and this is the bridge of your face and you know i mean if you had like a a pretty like high up shot and your neck comes out from here but anyway all those basic forms they'll come back to haunt you the ones that you don't know they're going to be your nemesis <laughs> What is Fibok drawing lately? I don't know, but Jason's really good, man. He's really good. I remember calling a friend of mine at DC. He had done a couple of issues of Justice League. And I was like, dude, have you seen these Justice League? It was funny because they had sat in my office forever. I had a box. I had several boxes full of DC comps. I hadn't looked at oh, the hip, The hips and chest on this are great. I love the the juxtaposition of the two forms. Um but uh, I hadn't I hadn't seen like the comps for a while, so I went through the box and I, I flipped through every book, and I saw two issues of Jason on Justice League. This is years ago, probably ten years ago. But man, he had gotten so good. And this is where perspective really comes important with figures. And this is what I was kind of talking about: is people tend to really focus on that perspective is mainly for buildings, you know, cars. But ultimately, you're going to be putting your forms, your figure forms, into perspective. And, you know, it's as simple as honestly just understanding the chest and the hips, you know, and all this other stuff will fall really into place. And then the other thing that you just want to get is you want to make sure that you have the ground plane for your feet, you know, and it's not that hard. It's not that hard to put feet on a ground plane and, and feel that. But, you know, where it gets where it gets hard and beginners kind of make a mistake is they have a tendency to want to draw characters sort of standing with their feet on like one plane, you know they've got their character like this and it's really really difficult to show any space but the moment that you put them on a plane like this or even more skewed all of a sudden you know you can have the legs out you know and on these different footings and then you start to get some dynamic stuff where you've got you know a character you know in perspective and this is all in perspective too if you follow all the vanishing points this is still all going to go to a thing. And if you wanted to have three point perspective, you would even have maybe a little bit of this sensation possibly, you know, but it'll all come with time. And again, like Mick Ray said, Mick was absolutely right. You know, um, fake it till you make it. You can try it that way, you know, work from the outside in and the inside out. <laughs> Do you ever cover paneling for pace and storytelling? I, I mean, I have, I mean, I think when we talk about the comic book stuff, like the sequentials, it gets there. I've done, I've done videos recently on Patreon where I talk more about the layouts where I'm specifically looking at full comics and talking about what I see with the layouts. But, you know, again, it's, it's only my observations doesn't mean that I'm right. You could have a different opinion on something or see it from a different perspective. Obviously everyone's experience with storytelling is different. I said to the, one of the lessons that I did today, I said, you know, he had a panel where um, he had a bird flying into the panel, but it, it didn't work with the other panels. But as, uh, let me draw it like here. I'll draw it small. But he had a shot of a bird. and It was kind of like a back view and it was flying into the scene like this. Um, but what he really needed to do is he really needed to get the reader over here and to the panel set here and he needed to get the reader over here. So having having a bird flying into the second panel like this direction didn't really make sense so I, I i had recommended i said like instead of doing that why not do this since ultimately you want to get me going this way i said you could have had the bird coming forward i can't remember if it was an owl or what it was it was a parrot and i said you know do a shot like this where the parrot's actually coming this direction 
towards us, you know, and you could even maybe have the wings coming out a little bit and then you could have the jungle, you know, behind it, you know, but that, that is going to move you this way, having a back view of a bird in the second panel going into the scene, like literally like that is too flat. You know, you, you want to keep people moving from panel to panel. Pacing a lot of times is can even be the width and narrowness of a panel, to be honest, like a, a real narrow panel. And in, in particular, if you've got a few in a row, will feel like time is moving quicker. It's a lot of subtleties to this. All right. So look, I'm going to wrap this up. But look, how to draw how to draw comics the Marvel way really is a great book. It's an incredible it's a it's a very large quantity of material to get through in one single video and i went quite a bit longer than i wanted to i didn't realize that i was going to show uh tutorial stuff i, I would have been better in manga studio because i was using a very clunky pen but um anyway the fact of the matter is is that there is a lot of value that you can get from the marvel book whether you whether you acknowledge it now or not um as dated as it might seem it it definitely has some really good gems in it and and like for me right now if there was one piece of information that i would get from the marvel book if i could help it would be i would like to have more dynamic layouts for my panels i would also like to have more um dynamic figures instead of sitting in the middle i need my figures to be out on those fringes more do you have an affiliate link i don't you know i i I never looked at um, Patreon like that, but I probably should. So I I, I appreciate you asking, um, but um, I, I'll I'll set that up. I I really need to be more efficient with that stuff, and and um, you know, because it's not a big deal. It's like you're not ripping anyone off. They're not going to pay more because they use an affiliate link. But um, yeah, I should go to I should go to Amazon and just um set that up. I really, honestly, at this point, I should try to reach out for sponsors for my channel. It sounds weird, but um, I mean, I've seen YouTube channels with like 8,000, 10,000 uh, subscribers that have way, I mean, I've never had an endorsement ever. My channel is a little somewhat legit. <laughs> Let's see. You can place them in your YouTube videos. Oh, okay. Wow, the inking was incredible on those drawings. Uh, I, I didn't catch which ones it was. I'd have to go back and look on it. Let's see. I was going back to that book next to my list. This was perfect. Yeah. And you know, again, it, it's, it, it, like, it may not, it may not have an impact on you now. I hadn't looked at the book in probably two years and just on the random, like I said, I was drawing a blaster kid drawing and I was like, her head looks too big. Like, and I've got, I have, I have a big, I have probably 30 different drawing books, like literally to the right of me. I'll read to you what they are right up. I have, animal anatomy i have the art of animal drawing i don't even draw animals i have two animal books in my office right now i have three how to draw animals by jack ham i have jack ham drawing the head and figure i have two japanese pose files books that i never used but i thought that they were cool i have um what is it oh um god what's his name hold on i want to see his name so i can at least credit him oh i have the ben caldwell action cartooning book Next to that, I have cartooning um, the red covered Jack Ham book. Next to that, I have five of the Disney They Drew as They Please books. Next to those is four how to draw manga books um, that are, I think, more like motorcycles, ones like battleships and guns. I have The Illusion of Life from Disney. I have keys to drawing with keys to drawing with imagination. Oh, John Howe. John Howe was the book I was thinking of. I have the John Howe, like, fantasy, what is it, fantasy, fantasy workshop. I have another one on drawing fairies that I never have used, but I, I saw it at Aaron Brothers one day and bought it. I have the two Star Wars sketchbooks, like the old school ones, Joe Johnston. I have a couple of watercolor books. I have the five Mateo Mestri um, framed books. Is it five? Yeah, it looks like five. And then I have three more manga books like how to draw manga i have the two michael hampton dr figure drawing design and invention i have three of the bridgman books i have more shit up here i have bridgman's i have gottfried bam's anatomy i have a million anatomy books i have pax i have fucking uh, what's the really old one i've i've a, i've one anatomy book is like 100 years old hold on it's right here
this was one of the guys that loom or not loomis sorry um oh this is vanderpool right yeah j h vanderpool this book is almost 100 years old um uh weindecker studied this guy but i use them all what's my favorite book i don't have a favorite i don't need to have a favorite i, I could have 300 drawing books and literally like maybe in this one i like how he drew the fingers on one page that you know if if it makes my hands one percent better it's worth it so don't get too picky about it these are some beautiful drawings too this book is pretty cool it's surprisingly not as expensive as you would think for a book that's um a hundred years old i think let me see how old this thing is have you reviewed ambassadors yet no i haven't I, I i don't think that i would for a while i mean it's just came out i'll let people enjoy it yeah this book was this book came out in 1915 so it's a uh, hundred and eight years old if i'm doing the math right crazy right when i run into a problem i break them out right well and there's even more that i use funny enough what is this right here oh i have this right here too look at this uh this one drawing force use the force rich <laughs> but they're all cool you know there's there's always a little um oh but do you have albrecht Durer's figure canon sketchbook i don't think i do to be honest i would never lie and say that i did to be cool i i know albrecht door but i don't i don't i honestly don't think that i have that and i may have a digital copy of it like a pdf but i i'm i i don't think so People like it's funny, like not that he's a figure drawing teacher, but I I really never got into Gustav Dor very much. I bought like one Gustav Dor book way back when I first started getting into comics, and never really picked up more because I know sometimes when people see my pen and ink, they would they would think that maybe I was into that stuff more. I, I definitely like his his work, but yeah, it's kind of weird, you know. Sometimes just stuff doesn't like. I like Franklin Booth better. If I was going to, between those two, I would say I like Franklin Booth's work better. Get with the program. I'll look into it. The Dresden sketchbook. I don't know that one. Hold on. Let me, I'm going to make a screenshot of these. I'll look these up, Stephen, after the video. Oh, sorry. Hold on. Let me do this really quick. A screenshot of this. Mui Bridge. I do have the Mui Bridge book. Is it in here? Let's see. Yeah, it's right here. I don't have the other one. I think there's three of these. One's like animals, but I do have this one. So look, I'm telling you, I, <laughs> I've drawn, I've drawn from all these fucking books. I'm telling you, it's, it's like I, I was so determined to, to get good, and I had so many bad habits. And this is, I, I said this in the, the other video, and it can, it can sound cocky, but I, I, I'll, I'm being honest. I had a lot of art, natural artistic ability just as a kid. Uh, and that doesn't mean really anything when you try to become a professional, because ultimately you have to learn professional skills. Natural ability will kind of like help maybe you learn some stuff faster. It's not enough. Okay. But um, I was so stubborn with what I, what I could do that I, I kind of fought. I fought the the process because I was I was self taught from books. Um, I, I I would go like you know if I if maybe if I just like try this I can avoid this and and ultimately I realized that I I kept hitting dead ends. My stubbornness wasn't helping me grow to the level that I wanted to. And ultimately I had to tap out and just go look. You 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 have to start from scratch know that your natural ability isn't going to go anywhere the things that you can do pretty good already are not going to dissipate but you need to like literally start at the beginning and fucking eliminate all these terrible habits that you had i would just start drawing like random shit, like i was saying like with the hips starting with the hips i don't know why i do that it was the only way that i could i could consistently finish figures that were standing in a room but but there might be better ways to do it i i don't know um so let me catch up with the chat really quick door is amazing yeah no i mean his stuff is really cool but um yeah for whatever reason it really never i have some of the morpho books in pdf form i don't own any hard copies from them but i have seen them and in fact i was looking at the morpho one of the anatomy books just literally like i think um friday in fact funny enough 
Um, let's see. I wouldn't say that it's useful, fun to look at, and how he's working out his figure analysis. A mirror by the desk is great for facial expressions and taking goofy photos of yourself doing poses as well. Yeah, I mean, a cell phone is a godsend. Now, oh, and you know what? I'll tell you, like, I have a very cool couple of apps on my phone. I don't use them a lot. I actually got them, honestly, for Patreon. But um, they're, they're actually really cool. Unfortunately, though, and I hate to show it and then have it be a bummer for you guys. But so it's called Action Anatomy. Let me pull it up really quick. The problem is, is that they don't offer the premium version anymore. So you can't actually buy what I have on my phone. And the free version is, is um, does anyone have this app? So you can still download the free version of Action Anatomy, but it's it's very frustrating for people because when 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 I when I bought it about a year or two, well, it was probably about a year back. It was during COVID. Um, I paid like twenty bucks and got like the full app, but the full app is amazing. Um, but it doesn't it doesn't exist anymore. They don't sell it. They were they were trying to improve it. And um, anyway, let me show you what this this app does. It's similar to like um, you know maybe like what you would have in Das Studio. But I like this better. So you get you have a choice of a bunch of different figures, and they will pose. You can put in them in action poses and stuff like that. It's fucking amazing. But you also can use these types of figures. You have it, Matt. Do you have the premium version? Have you seen the Masters of Anatomy pose series? Is that an app, Will, or is that a um, um, is that a book? I've long considered publishing the ultimate anatomy book. It would be a daily workbook designed to memorize and internalize bones and muscles. Uh, that would be cool. You should like just start it. Nope. Oh, yours isn't the premium. Yeah. See, the premium has got like all this stuff. So, so like if you can see down here, sorry, let me get this. So they've got, I know this is going to be a little blurry. Let me, Um, I can't. So they have standing, sitting, kneeling, laying, um, poses, now motion. You can actually do gestures. So, like, say I wanted to have movement. Um, I'm gonna have. Uh, let me see where it is. Fight or pistol. All right, watch this. So, it'll actually like if I do the pistol, it'll actually do this and get into a pose where he's like getting ready to shoot a pistol. Or I could have um, this. And again, I don't. I don't really use this for my drawings. I got it for Patreon to to have um, good reference or like. Oh, he's shooting a gun. Um, but you can rotate these figures. You can look at it from above or below. But stuff like this is this is the future of I think um, learning tools. You know, fuck all this modern shit. Well, like, <laughs> okay, like seriously, like Wiley, I'm not gonna call you out on this like aggressively. But like, okay, so you say fuck all this modern shit, but like. Again, when I when I hear stuff like that, I kind of wonder like what like how shut down are you? Because like I already said, I've learned from Bridgman, I've learned from Loomis. Like I'm not, I I wouldn't close any opportunity for me to prove what my traditional drawing skills. That's what I'm really focused on. All the art I do is traditional. So why why would why would I not want to get better at moving form around? Why would I not want to get better at dynamic poses? Now, the 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 problem that you run into with apps like this is there are people that will get lazy with it. But I think um, ultimately, um, uh, you know, if if you're using it as a tool to like get better at drawing, then what's the personal? No, I get it. I get it. What, but what I'm saying, though, is like like, um, you know, like, have you ever learned from a drawing book? Because it's. I don't really see the difference. This is just a like. Let me show you like an anatomy pose, like where it's like the um, the character is like anatomically looking. But I mean, uh, see, I don't even know the app that good. Like to get into. Oh, hold on, let me. I think I can change the figure now, um, like this. But it gives you. There's almost like 15 different body types that you can use. So man, you can you can have a skeleton, and now he's shooting the gun as a skeleton you've got you know this type of figure and again i can rotate it into any position and see what like like just you know like like say you're drawing a character and you're going to have the arm at a real tight shot and you want to just see like how the anatomy is like how is that not helpful i think that's a great great tool you're a luddite no i mean you know look we all we all are at some point 
the link to the app. It's called um, Action Anatomy. Like I said, though, the only problem is you're not going to have an ax. You, you're going to get frustrated immediately because you're not going to have access to all this stuff because they don't they don't sell it anymore. I don't know what to do. I told my wife. I said I need to keep this phone <laughs> intact just because the app is so cool. So let me show you. I have another app on my phone that I got for Patreon for lessons just because I I thought that it's such a cool um, reference tool. Let me show you really quick. Oh, this ended up being a really fun video. I hope people are enjoying sort of the randomness of this. All right, my phone's about to die too, ironically. Okay, so the other one is called Art Anatomy. So Art Anatomy is just um, basically like an anatomy book. But what's interesting about this is, and again, this is the paid version of the app. Um, if I if I go into the 3D models and I'm going to look at the trunk of the body, then Stephen, you're going to like this app a lot if you've never seen this. So it it it's anatomy like this, but what's really cool about it is you can tap any muscle and it tells you the name of the muscle because I know you're big on the name of the muscle. On top of that, though, I can actually remove muscles. So I can actually tap it and start to, to take them out. So I'm going to remove three muscles. See, now look, I've removed all the muscle off of that shoulder and now I can see the bones. But if I want to put one in, now I put on the I put the pack back on and I can see how it attaches to the arm bone. And this is this this was a gold mine for me. And then look, now all of a sudden I put the the shoulder muscles on it. And then now I can do this. I put the traps. You see the shoulder muscle? Watch like uh, I'll remove it. You see how the shoulder muscle is gone now behind the neck and then I can put it back in and I can rotate this so I can literally see it from the back. I can see it from here. I can do this. And this is a fucking phone app. I mean, this shit is a gold mine. Just use AI. Um, I a, AI isn't really doing this yet. I mean, you're just talking about, like like essentially all AI is doing is is just printing out pre done pieces. That's like saying like find a photo that's never seen and say that it's art. You know. There is no accuracy in comics. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, so I was going to go back to the AI thing. Uh, look, there's going to be a lot of people that will only use AI. They're going to use AI to fill their Instagram full of thousands of images that they'll, some will claim that they draw, some will paint over them, some will digitally paint over them, whatever it is. But there's, there's going to be a shit ton of AI. There's going to be AI comics. There's going to be AI, you know, video games. There's going to be AI animation. It's going to be AI everything. There's no way to avoid it. Some guy got pissed and I think even quit my channel because I said that. But it's the reality. You can't like the joke or what. I don't know if it's a joke, but people say you can't really put that genie back in the bottle. I think even Jim said that art anatomy and not action anatomy. No, there's two different apps. This second app is the art anatomy. Hold on, let me shut it. Yeah. So art anatomy is the one that's the muscles. And then action anatomy is the one that was the figures that was this this like looking at. And I'm an Android, so um, uh, my phone died. Oh no, it didn't. Hold on, <laughs> sorry, it's about to die. So this is the action anatomy one. The action anatomy one is probably the funner one for comic book artists. And, and like I said, if you have an opportunity to buy it as a premium version, I would highly recommend it. In fact, they have some YouTube videos on YouTube. Um, of, of the app in process so you can you can actually look up action anatomy on youtube but it hasn't been updated in like two years so i'm i'm a little scared that they drop the project because they're a company that does other they do other digital media and i think they they hope that maybe it would be a money-making project and and all, all ultimately maybe didn't make money for them too much accuracy makes for bland stiff boring storytelling right but I think any artist can agree that that uh, well, I was talking to someone this morning. I won't see who the artist's name is, but it's an art collector. And the art collector prefers this artist's work when he was earlier in his career because he used less reference. Now he uses a lot of photo reference. He uses 3D models and stuff like that. And the art isn't as fun to him. But the fact of the matter is, is that the art that the certain collector likes has a lot of accuracy. It's not accurate to the pixel of muscles attaching to the bone on the right spot and all this stuff but there's enough accuracy that the the drawings are cool looking jack kirby isn't accurate but his stuff is consistent so 
ultimately, you know, you're going to have to pick your own um, level of detail with things. So. Or is someone trolling me? I don't think anyone's trolling me. And if they are, it's fine. I can take it. I'm a big boy. Um, so let's see. There are probably only five people alive that can ink as good as me. <laughs> I'm fucking with you. I, if anyone wants to go toe to toe with me in an inking competition, I'd be more than happy to do it. You you pick the piece. We can go live on YouTube anytime. I'll I'll actually like. I would love to give it a shot. But I'm I have to see that you have some quality to your work. I'll let the people vote if it would be a worthy opponent. But yeah, I I'll go up against anyone in any style. You pick the style that you want me to ink in. That's how confident I am. You you can pick any style of inking, any piece. Let's go right now. That's why I say to my friend, let's go live right now. All right. So anyway, um, let's do it. Right. Humans are running headlong into making themselves obsolete and seem to be oblivious to it. How do I feel about AI? Uh, I I mean, I'm not I'm not really I, I'm I think that the tool itself is interesting. I'm not a fan of how it's probably going to be used. If that makes sense. So I don't feel good about it I, because I see it with music production too already is that it like there's a really like it's weird because the the exciting thing for people that have don't have the ability to create art or create music is they can now kind of feel what it's like to put like create an original i saw a guy he he it was on facebook and he was like he was like he he had like it was they were just generic mid-journey um uh, uh what would you call it um creations like they were just made in min journey but he was like these prompts were carefully picked by me and the the images were like you know like i massaged it into these pieces and i'm like dude i could literally use five prompts and come up with the same exact shit that you just did <laughs> so there's a lot of hyperbole with it right now rich is the modern day gary martin of inking it possibly gary martin is great man i i remember when i first started collecting comics he was inking sludge over aaron lopresti god it was good rich versus series right you know <laughs> i'm just fucking around it's it's kind of a riff off like i said i have a a, a friend of mine and i always joke like when when i when an artist is is cheesy i'll go we need we need to go live on youtube it's kind of like the old iron chef challenges i think um uh kelsey does the graybeard stuff it's like similar you know where artists um do it well artists are trying to stand up for the rights with the ai thing i i think um like if if you scrapped out like if you scrapped all the ai ir right now like if they said hey look right now what's what's been let out of the bag isn't legal too much of the art that's being generated is being generated from images that really shouldn't be in the pool of things that could be generated these companies within probably a year could create enough material where people would be satisfied with um legal content because the thing is and this is honest to god truth too is believe me there's a lot of artists that have never been able to really make a career out of art that are more than capable to be hired by an ai company to make a bunch of um reference for those companies easily you could hire 100 artists that are struggling right now in their careers that were concept artists that are out of work that are digital painters that aren't getting work that are comic book colorists that aren't getting work that are um figure artists you know they went to art school got really good at figure drawing and pencil sketches whatever it is photographers photographers could sell oh finch would kill me it's not even a competition finch would destroy me um Kelsey would destroy me. I mean, they're 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 just they have way more experience than me. Um, but yeah, um, but uh, you know, photographers that have taken thousands and thousands of photos, that if if they went like, look, we'll give you five grand to buy, you know, ten thousand photos off of you, some people would take it and they would be able to create enough AI content that that it it's still gonna move this direction. People could sell their whole comic book career. Say there's a manga artist that did 5,000 pages of manga art and they're, they're done. They're the end of their career. They never really made it to the level of like superstar mangaka. They, they got to like C level. They could sell all that work to an AI company and that could be part of the, the content. You know, it's just the way that it is rascals versus flats, right? That's what it could be called. 
AI was supposed to replace my job 18 years ago. Still can't create or solve what I can as a human. AI programs can imitate human creations and replicate it. Can't do the hard stuff yet. Well, and like, that's the hope. It was very shocking how quick AI got good. I think anybody that really was kind of keeping an eye on it. I mean, it was like last summer, it was kind of cute and sort of fun. Like three months later, it was like, oh shit. Like this thing is like picking up some steam six months in it was like doing pretty nice work and everybody was making fun of it and doing bad hands and then that kind of got resolved and it's like <laughs> it's a freight train i'd only challenge rich in an anatomy and you might beat me it's possible i don't i i mean i'm always trying to learn stuff i i you know you you definitely could know anatomy better they can't really compete in the traditional art area you know, though, I mean, I've seen pencil AI art that looks phenomenal, to be honest. You know, like you you put in like Soriyama as a prompt and it's like it looks it doesn't look just like a Soriyama piece. But I mean, it's like, you you know, people that know how to work the programs can get pretty good results right now. And it's um, yeah. Come feed your creativity to our AI. Johnny Five needs more input. I know. Yeah, we could do nerd trivia. That would actually be really fun. Oh my God, we should do a trivia night on the show. How fun would that be to get like 12 people and we could all we could all do trivia? I don't know how we would I guess we could have like one of the people in the thing could be the um the not the judge, but like the trivia provider. That would be really fun. My son is a programmer and uses AI as an assistant to be faster at his job. Really helps on some things today. Well, and I can't think of what it's called. Chat G G G H P. What's it called? Chat G H T. I I think that people are going to use that for writing comics too. Because I saw I I again I don't want to name names. A comic book artist posted some art a few weeks ago, and it was a concept for a book. I'm going to make up fake ideas of what it was. It was every which way but loose meets um, Rambo. <laughs> and so like not only had they shown ai art it was very obvious to me that it was just ai generated art of course they said it was ai art that they had worked over so it wasn't just ai art apparently they had done something to it but i'm telling you you could go into mid journey right now and come up with something that literally looked exactly like what they did it wouldn't be the exact image what i'm saying this exact level of quality and then they had a whole synopsis for what this story was going to be and I went like, okay, so you're using AI art for the promo art for this thing. And then you like your story kind of feels like you might have chat GPT'd it. And that's kind of weird. Like, I, I really hope that it doesn't get to that point where people are just making up comics through chat GPT and um, like mid journey, but it will, there will definitely be comic books that are made like 95 to 98% that way. All right. So let's see. Traditional artists will be like vintage Star Wars Kenner toys. AI will flood the market. Yeah, the trivia will be fun. I agree with you like that. Um, uh, will flood the market like collectible toys, but will be worthless with traditional artists creating. Yeah, that's kind of what I hope. Like that's I'm and I and I've I've joked and said I'm kind of glad that I'm a little bit older because I won't have to contend against this stuff for as long as maybe someone who's like 18 but someone that's 18 is going to kind of come up with this and um you know have to do it so i learned the soriyama style of frankensteining images and painting and airbrushing watching the soriyama doc i need to see that doc hold on i'm going to screenshot that roy so i remind myself to check that out because i i really like soriyama's art forget trivia do a name that tune <laughs> oh with comic art have fans of the channel compete to name the artist for a piece of art um who's providing the art i don't understand like <laughs> chat gpt is extremely powerful at this point with so much web scraping yeah you have so much trained i know <laughs> it's crazy whoever thought that it would get like this that fast like do you guys trip out on that i mean i i never would have thought that like in a year things would be so different if anything i can so see myself using ai for character design that would be very helpful okay if they're good comics, bring it on. We'll see. And like, and that's a very open-minded perspective on it. Not everyone will have that, but I, I, I applaud that. Hello, everyone. What is up? How are you? Only I don't have an overhead projector. Yeah. There's other ways you can transfer the photo to the board. 
um, they have that gr there's graphite paper, like um like um, oh, you remember carbon paper, like with a typewriter where you could type and have carbon paper. They have they have paper like that that's graphite. There's a crisis of human comic book writer intelligence. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Everyone is selling fear. AI isn't replacing anyone. Oh, it will. <laughs> That's a very positive attitude, but <laughs> AI will will definitely um, take jobs from people. It already has, because the thing is, is I've seen bands that are using AI for album covers. I've seen bands that are using AI for music videos. I've seen, um, you know, like if someone needs a logo, although their AI isn't really great at logos yet, but if you needed like if you needed art for for like say you had a fruit a fruit store and you sold fruit fruit and flowers you could easily side side you know not have to deal with hiring someone for a thousand bucks to draw oranges and bananas and flowers and and have 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 it printed in ai and then come up with a logo so people will definitely own i mean um lose work over it it doesn't bother me. I still love drawing and creating my IP. Right. And that's good. I definitely donate a good book to a contest as a prize. Okay. AI can't own IP. Right. I've heard that, that um, you, you can't create um, a copyrightable thing with AI. But now the question is, is though, is like, say that comic book artist that I saw online a few weeks ago. So if, if the, if the reference that they use is based on AI, and the concept of the story is sort of, you know what I mean? Like initially kindled from that, you know, where's the line of like, again, if it's every which way, but loose meets Rambo, it's, it's Rambo with an orangutan and chat GPT sort of, you know, comes up with sort of like an idea for it. Um, you know, if the person writes the story themselves, but just uses it, well, look, see, here's another one. So like Eskio, what's up, man? How are you? I love chat G, uh, PT, LO. I get, to ask it all sorts of silly questions that Google can't answer. There you go. Now, do you feel that the answers that it gives you are accurate or is it just like, it just tells you um, what um, what the internet's most, um, uh, what do you call it? Like uh, common answers are. You can make trace down paper with vellum and pencil scribble on one side. Right, I, that's what um, uh, soy milk does. That's Kent Williams' wife. She's a really, really good painter, but she does it with graphite. So she'll she'll take a big sheet of paper, cover it with graphite, and then she takes her photo reference and draws over it and gets the silhouette of the figure onto her canvas. Um, yeah, within five months of the release. Yeah, no kidding, right? It was fast. David Baldo has the doc. Thank you very much, Roy. I appreciate it. Let's see. An art challenge of some kind will bring out the best in everybody. I think it does, to be honest. Um, but the lack of intelligence even says something about the times we live in. Only a HNSO or HNOS intelligent human can produce a modern Captain Marvel. Right. And, and that that could be totally true. I mean, I've seen the lyrics that that um, chat GPT writes, like in the style of people. It, they're pretty generic. I just might find I, I just mean humans will find ways to be a beat AI. Yeah, I mean, or work with it, right? All the poser, posers will fall off and the ones too lazy to improve. Right. When I had said that too, is it's like if you gave everyone like um the ability to draw a comic book right now with mid-journey, like literally they didn't have to learn to write, they didn't learn to ha have to learn to draw. Um, you other skills that you build throughout your comic book career is like endurance. Cause it's still work, you know, you still have to like organize things. You still have to like send it to a printer. You still have to create a fan base. There's all these sort of steps along the way. Like, like for, for me, I've done comic books for like 25 years. So, I mean, I've, I've met people in the nineties, I've created relationships. I have the ability to like sit and draw for nine or 10 hours a day or be on the computer and and like they haven't developed all the other skills so it's tricky and then on top of it you're literally competing with people that have the same exact skill set as you which is that they can create stuff in mid journey they can create stuff with chat gpt i know there's a stable diffusion there's a million different um uh, a ais but i'm just using that as an example but um yeah it's kind of like you've given everyone sort of the same exact skill level and so um the most creative people with those tools, if they choose to use them, are going to be the ones that will be able to um, creatively take it further. I am using AI for concept designs, but never for making actual art or story. Right. And that could be real valuable because you could create a lot of iterations very, very quickly. 
people use photo bashing. What's the difference then? Right. Well, and that's that was the big that was the big um, thing is is what I had said is to me AI is just like an automated photo bashing tool. So Steven Sabata is clued up on the whole AI thing and is actively trying to help push back on it. Smart guy, good artist, right? Him and um, the uh, Carla Ortiz. Sid Mead did it too, right? Oh, okay, yeah, Sid's great. All right, let's see. Will Excel, the issue is not AI itself, it's how, oh, he's answering, talking to Will Excel is how people use it can't be training on people's art without someone's permission well and that's the thing though is with stable diffusion you could do it and i think this will tie in with what dylan's saying right here how long until jack Kirby, jack kirby's work gets fed into ai and we all get a new jack kirby comic i mean that's i well jim lee did a speech and someone asked him recently about ai and he i don't i, I don't want to paraphrase for jim too much but like, like he liked the idea of his family being able to own an AI version of his art where he could be producing comic books after he's gone. Now, that's a very controversial stance, possibly, to some people. But like the reality is, and this is what I said to my friend that sent it to me, is I said, look, whether Jim wants to, to or not, anybody that's got a home version of Stable Diffusion on their computer could literally feed in every single page of Jim's art that he's ever done on all of his comics. And from what I could tell the chat or not chat GPT, but the stable diffusion AI generator, whatever it would be, uh, would, would work with that information pool. And you could have someone who could potentially create Jim Lee looking art, you know, and if they fed in one other influence, then it's diluted. It wouldn't look exactly like Jim anyway, or just whatever the random shit that it pulls from. So it's it's uh, it's a uh, quite a crazy thing going on, to be honest. So I, it doesn't seem far fetched that people will do check. Well, there, it was very controversial. It was right after um, Kim Jong Gi died, someone did a, a Kim Jong Gi. Um, mid journey piece or I don't know what it was. It didn't really look like Kim's work, but um it really, really pissed people off. So Daniel says, I was I trained myself looking at artists and copying the work in my own. Right. Will is a human AI machine. <laughs> uh so what about AI NFTs? If you lack the intelligence to buy an NFT, you might as well go with artificial intelligence. Right. What did you think about Todd McFarlane pushing NFTs? Has he kind of pulled back on that or is he still is he still into the NFT game? The chat GPT also does internet marketing. Well, I feel like there's a lot of YouTube channels now. I've noticed this with music news channels. So like because I follow so much music stuff, they'll be like, you know, the members in Iron Maiden are like arguing again. And you're like, oh, what's that about? And I'll go to the channel and it'll just be um, like, you know, Google image searched images of like Iron Maiden. And it'll be like a robot voice going, uh, Bruce Dickinson was seen, you know, arguing with Dave Murray at a sound check. And it's like, I don't even know if a real person is putting it together or if it's just people creating like, you know, AI YouTube channels now. So that's a little weird. I believe AI already took, I heard about that. <laughs> James, did he sell his voice to AI? <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a weird fucking world in like 25 years. I think it's really easy at the moment to spot AI, AI art versus human made, but it's getting pretty good. It's learning to draw hands. Yeah, no, for sure. <laughs> um, with AI, we'll all become Bob Kane's and not Bill Fingers, right? <laughs> oh, goodness. Have mercy on us. It's not going to be a Jack Kirby comic, right? No, I, I agree, but it's going to be Jack Kirby-esque. Jack Kirby's art will still be valuable, if not more valuable. No, absolutely. I mean, his original art will be. What's interesting is the possibility of hearing an AI conversation podcast between two historical figures. Yeah, that would be a trip, right? They would, would The voices would have to be documented, though, because I don't think, I mean, you couldn't theorize. I mean, you could, of course, but like on what like Abe Lincoln would sound like talking. Or do they have recorded? Do they have recorded Abe Lincoln? I don't know if they have audio recordings of him. Something's already happening is companies using AI to produce scripts, then hiring writers to fix. Right, right, exactly. Meaning that they can pay the writers less. You can bet that they'll do the same thing with art. I, I agree. And look at James. You're a good soldier, James. You guys can go to spring right now and get super fun Sunday shirts and all kinds of things. AI human art. I'm super cynical about NFTs. Right. I always kind of was too. Um, 
you know, there was like um, Pete Morbacher was really into the whole NFT thing and was selling a lot of them. And what was interesting is Pete Morbacher definitely was one of the more heavily used AI prompts initially um, that people would use. And there was a lot of art being generated that was Pete Morbacher inspired. Pete used to have a pretty good, um, it was called Best Week Ever um, on YouTube. Pretty good show. Um, and um, Pete, Pete actually, I think, works with AI now. So it's interesting. He's he's like someone who seems to follow each sort of like cutting edge new technology. And even though in a weird way, his work got assimilated into AI heavily, heavily right out of the gate. He didn't look at it as a threat. He just looked at it as another tool to, I guess, help him create. I don't I don't really know his thoughts on it. But I, I did think that that was interesting. Um, but he was uh, both... Um, into both um nfts and that my friend just ran into this at a con right what do you feel about original copies of art it was from the original inker but it was recently inked over i mean that's been going on since the internet to be honest because um uh people do recreations you could go on ebay right now and find not only fakes meaning that people that have taken like jim lee sketches and you know um made fakes you know like signed it as jim lee but yeah people that go like well and it was a lot of the reasons that a lot of artists at um deviant art were getting sort of weird was um on deviant art like greg capullo used to post incredibly high-res scans of his pencils and glapion was even posting really high-res scans of his inks i mean they were gigantic files and um you know, people kind of started to misuse them a little bit. It was like, it became like a free for all. Oh, I'm going to color all these pages. Or I'm going to ink all these pages. And, you know, I look, I, I tell people that are learning to ink, just as an example, obviously, if you're learning color, it's the same thing, is, you know, like they have these unwrap books. DC has unwrap books. So they sell the pencils with the lettering. And I say that, like, if you're ever looking for something to practice on, those aren't bad ideas. You've got a full book of Greg Capullo, Court of Owls, pencils but with that you have to remember that eventually you're trying to enter this industry so so making a bunch of bootleg greg capullo inks even though you might say hey this is my sample over greg it, it could rub him the wrong way I, I hate to use greg capullo as an example we'll call him artist x artist x has his unwrap book so you know i mean it's just it's like all of this stuff can kind of come back to sort of bite you on the butt there was an inker that used to do tons of recreations and um he got a lot of slapback from it, like from the the people that were the original artists, because it's like, how many of these are you going to do? You've done like dozens of recreations of my work and you're selling them, you know, for like a hundred bucks on like eBay. So, um, yeah, well, the thing is, is I what I thought you were asking to K-pop junk, junkie is imagine sitting next to someone at Comic-Con who has got 500 different Harley Quinn mid journey printouts that look just like art germ, you know, they've, they've got Joker ones, they've got Harlequin, they've got Bane, they've got Venom, and they all are like, you know, art, essentially art germ generated prompts. They could use 50 different prompts with it. But anyway, um, they're very, they're very identifiable. You can see them right away when you see them, but, um, you know, people at comic cons are going to be competing against that. And the thing is, is, you know, for a comic book artist to create a piece of that quality, it could take them five days. For someone using AI, you could generate 500 Harlequins in an afternoon or like we'll say in 24 hours um, and pick the best 50 to take to a show and people will buy them and not buy a person that's actually worked on art. It's going to be it's going to be crazy. There could be fights at cons over, it, I bet. Robot gossips, right? <laughs> There's a Discord channel dedicated to Mark McFarland Digital. I'm not interested. Yeah, there was someone. Oh, there was a there was a guy that used to push the um, the NF the McFarland NFTs heavily. AI has a human user on the other end of the software. If all it does is manipulate existing data to create work without creative input by said user, it's really just a copier versus a creative engine. Ha, uh, Rich, throwing it down. No, I mean, this is a conversation that people really want to have, you know, to be honest. Um, there's already a podcast managed by AI. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me. Honestly, it's refreshing to know that even AI sucks at drawing hands, right? <laughs> it has gotten a lot better, though. Honestly, I don't I don't think that overall it has much issues drawing hands anymore. Like anything, I mean, um, there's better 
uh, output and worse output. I took all my old drawings of Wildcats and ran stable diffusion with Jim Lee prompts and Frank Rosetta. And wow, it was trippy how I could restyle my drawing. Well, there you go, right? And look, you know, the thing is, is, you know, you admitting that is is cool. And the thing is, is that there's there's people that are doing the same exact thing um, that, you know, won't be as forthcoming about it, you know, and that's where it can get weird. In particular, like I said, I don't really mind when people use it as reference. Like, I think if if um, it, it, it's still it's a it's a sketchy line. But but what I'm saying is like, like, if say if someone you printed those out. And then you went like, okay, this is cool. Like, like this is different than my original drawing, but this is interesting. And then you drew it and inked it. That's a little different than just printing it out and then saying that you drew it. Already did Joe Rogan talking with a guest that Joe never did. It can get weird and will become dangerous. Yeah, that's scary, right? Man, that's that's super crazy. I wrote a Hellboy script to draw with chat GPT. It was okay, not great. About as good as most of the sample scripts that I've gotten from editors, <laughs> right? That's funny. <laughs> the AI conversations wouldn't be about the voices, but about the historical figures, worldview, like a conversation between Socrates and Napoleon. Then we can all be excellent like Bill and Ted. That's funny. I need to hear this. Who was Joe Rogan interviewing? Do you remember who it was? I see AI fading out, but becoming back some years stronger. I, I kind of don't think it's going to fade out, though. There's too many people that that are dying to do things with it. You know what I mean? Like, um, if you wanted to be an animator, but you couldn't animate. I mean, you see these. They're, they're, they look very AI. They're always, like, hor horrific. I don't know why it's always scary stuff. But, like, I've seen some AI music videos. And it's always, like, you know, clocks turning into monsters. And the, the things are melting. And it's all very grim and weird. But, um you know, eventually it'll be able to do pretty fun stuff too. I mean, it already could, I'm sure. Um, so the human experience is still a very detailed and nuanced thing to replicate and each life has its own signature. Definitely. There was once a former president who created NFTs with others' artworks and his Photoshop head was digitally meshed with it. Hmm. I don't know who that is. Jimmy Carter? <laughs> They are already using AI art in political attack ads, so it's rather bad at the moment. Ooh, I haven't seen that. That doesn't sound good. Just like how as soon as any new visual device comes out, it's used for sex, so will AI be used. Oh, I yeah. <laughs> uh, I was looking at it. was a book site. It was a Chinese book site, but it had, had a bunch of like really cool drawing books on it, and um, they had photo galleries of sort of like examples of... Um, the, the interior of the books and so i i found it through pinterest because i was looking for hand reference and I, I i had found um one page of hand sketches that really had a cool style i was like man like i would love to see if is this from a book or is this someone's studies because there was just a the way that they drew the fingers i really liked and um so i did a reverse like a reverse image search on it and it took me to the site but anyway the site had um a whole bunch of the new they're, they're pre-made models for, I think, stable diffusion, but I recognized it right away because I'd seen them like a week or two ago. And it's like they're, but, but they were, you know, they were, they were basically like, they look like teenage girls in like bikinis and stuff like that. And it's like, it, yeah, like you said, it just, it gets weird really, really fast. Um, it was over Frank Miller's pencils and he was selling it for 10 K. Well, unless someone's really clueless, they'll never pay 10 K for it. Um, but, um, yeah. But yeah, there's all kinds of like photo realistic, um, like core models that they use now. I adore the unwrap books. Yeah, the, the unwrap books are great. I don't buy for the AI is a tool point of view. It's replacement. Right. What I, what I mean is it could be used as a tool, um, but, uh, it, you know, it will replace people for sure. I have five of those unwrap, but I won't use them to put in my portfolio. I don't uh, look, I honestly, I don't think that it would be tacky. Like if you were trying to get together an ink sample portfolio and you had one Tony Daniel, one Adam Kubert and one like, you know, nice um, Greg Capullo or Jim Lee from, I think Jim's got three of them. Uh, no editor is going to look down on you for that. So, so I'm telling you from a professional point of view, I don't think it's tacky to use those in your portfolio. What I think is tacky is to make a boutique business out of doing samples out of them and then immediately selling them like that's that that might be crossing a line if there's a line to cross <laughs> see but the pencil part was just printed from the original sketch right right so will excel it's a good point it's more about 
more that you actually have to on the high rise training. So it takes it without paying its problem, right? Well, again, I mean, I don't think that nothing is going to stop someone from feeding in a favorite artist into that stuff. Um, in particular, if they have it on their own computer and not on a shared server. Um, now that you've said, oh, <laughs> damn it, I blew it. <laughs> Any artist. <laughs> That's funny. All right, so let's see. Okay, we're going long. This is this is like a super fun thing, but I'm not doing another lunchtime lounge this week, so it'll make up for the lack of lunchtime lounges um, for the rest of the week. The normal audience wouldn't be able to tell the difference. Yeah, unfortunately, a lot of them. But you as a person could just look at the thumbnail and interpret it without needing the high res to learn. Bunch, if they on YouTube will. Joe showed one on his show, but I don't remember the guest. Oh, okay, oh, Matt, so weird. They'll need to connect the AI to some real pen and pencil. That will be something. I think that they've done that before, believe it or not, before even this, this initial surge. Stanley Art Germ may find himself sitting next to an AI copycat icon. Oh, God, that would be terrible. Artist X. Rich is a better mind than chat GPT. Artist X gets lots, lots of sex. That's my new book. Right. Feed that into chat GPT. See <laughs> I haven't tried chat GPT to be honest. It's, I, I don't know what I, I would like ask it about like Led Zeppelin or Rush or something. <laughs> Probably every artist is a combination of all their experiences. We don't owe anyone any credit for our own development. Should we all say I learned from God? Ooh, look at Will. Well, let me ask you this, Will, since you put it so bluntly. Okay. Like for me, Clearly, my work is influenced by Travis Charest, and I've made it a point to really make that clear when I, whenever I credit people that that have had a significant impact on my art, I would look like a pretty big douchebag to not credit Travis for for my um, strive for excellence, the polish that I put in my work, some of the aesthetics and stuff like that. So, I don't owe anyone credit, but as a professional. But not even as a professional, as a human, I think that it's important to acknowledge someone who did something great and inspired me to try harder on my art. Do I want my work to look like Travis? You know, it's a, it's a split hair on that. Sometimes, yeah, I actually do. Other times, I know it's important to not be a copycat of him. But, but I, I, you know, I, there was an artist that used to be heavily influenced by Simon Bisley. And instead of saying that they were influenced by Simon Bisley, they would say that they were influenced by Frazetta. They were influenced by Bill Sienkiewicz. They were influenced by this person and that person. They never said Bisley by name, but if you looked at their work, the first thing that anyone that knew Simon Bisley's work would go, oh, this person is definitely influenced by Bisley. So, you know what I mean? Like, I get what you're saying, but at the same time, I don't know if you owe people, but you might owe your fan base some honesty. So, there's there's Rich's tough love. <laughs> so commissions are out the window. Face, Fushida, tongue out, face, orange, biting nails. <laughs> oh, is that what that means? Okay, I, that's funny. I, I hope to see someone at New York Comic Con doing it. Dude, I'm telling you, like, there's, like, there was a guy that was selling this stuff at a mall, and they were all mid-journey, and he was lying about it. That was the thing that got me, is it was on Facebook. It was someone that I followed on Facebook, but I think it was a follow back, so I, I didn't know them personally. Um, but they were like, <laughs> this is, this is the whole evolution of the thing. So they, they, the first piece of mid journey they posted up was like, I'm trying this new style and wow, this thing is really working out for me. And like their, their fans, which was just a few people, I don't want to over overblow it, but all their friends were like, holy shit, dude, you drew that. Yeah. Yeah. I drew that. Yeah. It was like, I'm kind of trying a new style. Um, and then the next piece was again, clearly like mid journey and, um, you know, it's like, oh, now I'm trying this style. And then next thing you know, he was like, he's like, hey, I'm doing, um, I'm going to be at this mall. And he took a picture of his booth from really far away. So he's like, he kind of had like a kiosk at a mall, like it looks like somewhere in the Midwest. And, and I could see even from far away, it was a photo from literally like probably 50 yards away from his table. It was all mid journey art. It was like, like kind of what I was saying. It was like, harley quinn it was joker it was venom and and if you've seen enough of the any of the the mid journey versions of those characters they're pretty pretty noticeable so see i didn't know about the unwrap book how long they've been out you know i just stumbled upon them a few years ago but let me see i probably have one on my shelf somewhere 
I'll, I'll, I'll show you what it looks like. Do I have one in here? I've got to have one in here. I always have one. Do I have? Seriously? What? How do I not have one in here right now? Hold on. Give me one sec. Whoa, my phone's blowing up. I don't think I have one in here right now. Hold on. Let me look on this lower shelf. Yeah, I don't think I, I don't I don't think I have one in here right now. I'm surprised because I have a, a whole bunch of them. They're great. I, I must have took all my Capullo out of my office. Yeah, I don't know. I don't see any. That's really weird. I would assume I had them, but they're great. Just Google them. And, and some of them are actually still quite affordable. I meant on the ink challenge, you were throwing it down. Oh, I was just fucking around. It was like I said, it's a joke that I have with a friend of mine. It was like, let's go live now, right now. <laughs> I have that book. Busema still draws a lot better than me. Yeah. Hey, and thank you for the photos of the poster, the super fun Sunday poster. I really appreciate it, Michael. I wasn't sure. I, I didn't want to like say your name in case you didn't want it like publicly. I remember McFarlane saying it's not worth it to sit in Artist Alley if you don't have a comic run under your belt. Now with AI, I think that reigns true. Well, you know, try to be positive about it. I mean, people are going to like... um People are going to like you because of your art and like you because of you. It doesn't draw hands. It's just as messed up blending of images, right? <clears throat> the only thing I can't stand is when the prompters call themselves artists. Yeah, well, I, like, I don't know if I have it on my phone. Let me look really quick. There was a guy. I took screenshots of it because it was so hysterical. Um, oh, this guy was lying up a storm. Is it? I don't know. Uh, I couldn't, I just, it was like so weird to see someone so blatantly lying. It was a while ago though. I think I, I think I probably emptied my phone out. Yeah. I don't have them on here right now. Um, but, uh, I, I was like, wow, man, the talk about weird. Wait till AI hooks up with Skynet. <laughs> All right. And then Will says, I would love to make animations and video games, but I don't have the crew for that. That's where AI is being helpful. So Will is really into AI. Sheila Aliens did Joe interviewing Ethan. <laughs> really? <laughs> That's funny shit. It was Trump who had some NFTs made. Oh, okay. Like I said, I don't follow the news. I'm the worst person to talk to about politics and stuff like that. I'm like literally like completely clueless. Um, I'm not saying artists learning to draw is similar to the AI, but training the AI requires something more than a person from a legal standpoint. <clears throat> if it was the company that approached Trump to make oh, NFTs. Apparently they did really well. I wish I would have bought and flipped for five times, but still would have felt dirty to play that NFT game. <laughs> the dirty game of NFTs. Hell, we have to do our own checkout at some stores now. Right. I, it's interesting when people complain about that. My wife sometimes will say that. It's like, it's like you don't pay me to like, like I'm, I mean, I pay for like a service and now you've got me like doing part of the work. I, I never thought of it like that, but I guess I could totally see where people um, would. This is a super lounge. I know, right? <laughs> it is. Well, like I said, I'm not doing I'm not doing um, lunchtime lounges tomorrow, Wednesday or Thursday. So we'll be back for Super Fun Sunday. If you want to support comic creators, go find a crowdfunding campaign you like and back it right. And Dylan does great stuff. You guys should all be following Dylan on um, Instagram for sure. Because Dylan is a machine. He's he's uh, actually, you know, Dylan was funny. As I was thinking about this, I wanted to do um, a series of interviews with people that are super aggressive um, crowd funders, and I I thought you would be good for that. So I it, it'll be a little while. It might be after Comic Con, but at some point I wanted to do that. Like people that are really hustling that that, and so that people could learn you know techniques. Do you paint or use other mediums or pencil straight to inks for your comics? Um, I don't really paint. I, I mean, I've goofed around with it. Um, I Most of the time, like, I, I like to draw on paper the best, but I'm so picky. A lot of times what I'll do is what the, this is sort of what I've given myself the opportunity to do. I always sketch everything that I want to draw on paper first. And then if I like something, most of the times what I'll do is I'll, um, I'll um, take a photo of it and then I blow it up to the size that I want it. And then I'll light box um, uh, the, uh, like uh, enough information that I can draw it well, because and, and what it is too is I'm really particular about the positioning of stuff on a page. So, like, if I drew something really good and it was like half inch too much to the left or the right, my eye is so sensitive that it really, really would bother me. Kelsey and I have talked about this um, uh, on shows before too, but it's just it, it's better for me to just make sure that I have it positioned in a panel just so. So, um, that's that's basically my approach. But I do full pencils. I don't I don't like to do 
uh, breakdowns and ink it. I'm, I don't feel confident enough um, to, to do it. Uh, so I just want to make sure. Uh, so it, I'd kind of be cool with designing an alien or futuristic city in great detail and using it as a base for AI backgrounds on a book. It'd save a lot of time and allowed me more to focus on the characters, right? Rich, I think we do that because we want to share our love for them. If someone loves you and you say, I was influenced by Travis, that means you spread the love for Travis. Right. But I mean, there's artists that I like, I, you know, I'm trying to think of who else. I, I feel like there's some Mignola in my stuff. And I think there's some J. Scott Campbell in my work. Um, So, you know, I would credit those guys. I don't think anyone would look at my work and see J. Scott Campbell, but I have a lot of Campbell in my stuff. I, I really do. I, I, I just... I was such a big fan and I think I was trying to learn to draw like way this way back before I even broke in. Like I, I, his stuff looked more uh, approachable maybe. I don't know. Uh, Rich artists interpret and implement and will never be a copy. AI is deliberate. Okay. I always let people know I've learned everything from Finch. Try my hardest now to get as many influences to be my own artist. Right. Right. And you, you, and you're someone who actually like, I think you've you've been criticized a little bit for that online, right? Like some people like will get a little a little snarky and uh, comments. If it's not you, there's another artist that draws like Finch that I've seen. Um, oh, it's um, I know who it is. It's not you, but I've it's another artist that draws like Finch, um, and he's taking some heat for it, you know. So it's you know, it's one of those things. My influences are Claudio Castellini, Joe Mad, Ed McGinnis, and Stuart Immerman. Do I have to credit them in every piece I do? Where does it end? Should I list their influences too? You should do it all, Will. Do the right thing. No, I'm just, just kidding. People will ask, ultimately. I'm happy for all your progress and breaking through the past year. Yeah, after I finished Crystal Planet, I did a lot of soul searching for two months and decided never again. Never again. <laughs> Gabriel Hardman confronted a woman outside NYCC Javits selling prints of his work, and she allegedly attacked him. <laughs> what? Hold on, I have to take a screenshot of this. That sounds good. I thought it was. I thought. I thought what it was going to say. Like if I could have finished the sentence, is I was going to say that um, uh, confronted a woman that was selling Mid Journey prints at a show, and he's an artist that was drawing and was like going like, "You need to get this Mid Journey stuff out of here." But it, that wasn't the case. That's what I said. I learned from God because it all comes back to creation and someone learning from life. Well, fair enough. Well, you you run with that. Take it take it take it unwrap since 2014 quarter vowels i have that one i have the follow-up to quarter vowels i have two of the jim lee ones i think i have the tony daniel one flashpoint amazon has them for decent prices yeah i five unwrapped and multiple black and white color right and that was the other thing if you're a colorist the black and white coloring books are a freaking gold mine you could like scan any of those black and white coloring books that like dc i don't know if marvel has done them but i know dc has um and you've got basically like original black and white pencils and inks inked and you could practice coloring on them it's great and you could scan them as high res as you want i am trying an exercise where i use bing art generator to generate an image and then i redraw it to see how much i can improve it i have not seen the bing art generator so i don't know art style to me is about the experience of me the artist and finding new indies i also like to invite new creators on my show to introduce them to the community i didn't know you had a show i'll let me i will actually um i'll come over and make sure that i'm subscribed to your channel uh, I agree. I always try to go to day one because it's slower and I can chat with the artists. No worries, dude. Just want to show off the influence. Okay, so I'm going to start wrapping this up. We'll go quicker now. I think I said goodbye an hour ago, right? <laughs> yeah, no worries. Uh, like I said, this is a fun conversation. So it's always interesting to kick this around. Some of my favorite reads have been the smaller unknown tables. Yeah, definitely. If you haven't seen it yet, there was a Batman AI script on YouTube. It's pretty hilarious. I'll have to check that out. Man, sometimes it takes you a long time to sound like yourself. There you go. It's true. I would like to have I would like to have some Joe Matarera in my work. Stephen Platt, Jay Lee, um, who else? Oh, Struzen. <laughs> Lots. What's up, Luke? Luke always comes in with a holla. I can hear you, Luke. Holla to Luke. Luke is always working hard on his art. Follow Luke's channel. He does the stream every single night and draws stuff. 
I always ask my favorite who, artists who their influences are. I want to see how the magic was made. <clears throat> right. Well, what if they answered you and they said, God, you would go, well, that guy was an asshole. <laughs> Think about it. Will, come on. <laughs> Tom Fox is, of course, for $10 on domestic rights right now. It's not bad. Interesting. J. Scott Campbell is an Art Adams clone. So your 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 a work must look like AI mixed Campbell and Adams. <laughs> I don't draw anything like uh, you wouldn't see Art Adams or Campbell in my work. Uh, can I be on your show? Look, there you go. All right. So let's, and on the flip side of using ever empowering technology, you can play a shoestring if you're sincere. Right. They always say if you hit a wrong note, do it twice. And it'll sound like you mean it. There's a lot of pearl clutching in AI for legacy or or financial reasons but there are so many examples in history of new tech disappearing industries learn to adapt excuse me learn to adapt and focus on what you love to do right and i think in a, in a way what i've seen is there's really a surge of um better um traditional art and artists um sharing more of the process which is exciting to see marvel has more black and white comic books than dc there are tons from spider-man all right very cool and again those are great to color from i am still going dan still going Rich, we need an Elden Ring concept art video. I love the Bloodborne one. Okay, I'll look into that. I'm going to take a screenshot of that too. Are you a fan of Blind Guardian? I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. Whoa, long one today. I thought I missed it and you're still going. Yeah, this is because I'm only doing one this week. This is Rich's long form lunchtime lounge live. LOL. I'd accept that. You would accept that. Well, not everyone would. They, some people would go to the internet and complain. Man, Jorge Jimenez would be great for an unwrapped. Yeah, he would. Uh, what's your channel called? Okay, and then this is the last one, and we're going to end it. AI as a tool isn't the problem. It's where it's getting its data. It's plagiarism tool right now. Okay, we're going to end it with that. And like that, all we are is dust in the wind. <laughs> so look. That was fun. That was a spicy show. Spicy. I'm spinning. My mouth is all dry. I've been talking for, I don't even know. And Joe, give me give me 20 minutes and we'll do our um, chat if you're still here. Joe Lalich. Um, and um, yeah, so Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I've got stuff to do. I may do a video on Friday if I can. And then if not, I'll be back for a super fun Sunday. And then next week, like I said, my goal is to have guests. And um uh, that'll be really fun. I, I'm not 100% sure who I'm going to get yet, but um, I've got some ideas and I'll hit people up. And um, okay, so yeah, it's 142. I'll, I'll text you around too, Joe. Um, and then, um, yeah, next week we'll come back full force, as they say in the wrestling biz. So look, you guys go out there and have fun. Be creative, you know, explore. <laughs> Well, we'll possibly we'll, at some point. At some point, maybe we'll. I'll do a show with um, people from the chat. That can go like I, not. Not. I'm not. Not saying my chat people would be boring, but I've I've followed YouTube shows where there's a chemistry between like the host and the chat, or the host and a co-host that they use a lot in the chat, and then occasionally they'll bring on like a third person, and it ruins it. It's it's just one of those things where you got to be really careful. And I mean, one show wouldn't be like a big deal, but um, yeah, it can be a very fragile thing. Chemistry is like um, it's it's an intangible. But I've had shows where I'm like, oh god, get this guy out of here. It was better with just you two. Why is this third person here now? They're annoying. <laughs> You're too big of a fan of Kelsey. Kelsey's the best. Sorry. Look, honesty can be hard to hear. <laughs> All right, I got to go. I really, I got like two more hours of lessons I got to do today. So look, you guys have an awesome day. I'll see you later. Bye. Kiss my wax. I know. You got to follow Joe's. Joe has an insane kiss channel. No, kiss my wax is good. Look, the, Joe, like Joe's co-host is John Five. <laughs> like, you can't get a better co-host than that. Joe, Joe does a kiss show called kiss my wax. It used to be called kiss my collectibles. And, um, oh man, it's, it's so good. But yeah, they have, they have John five on and all kinds of cool guests. So, all right, I'll talk to you guys later. Don't be sad. Like, look, there's gotta be something on my channel that you didn't watch yet 
So Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, you can you can catch a classic Rich rerun. <laughs> Remember what they say. If you haven't seen it, it's new to you. Sorry, I'm going to go. I got to eat lunch, and then I got to talk to Joe. All right. Bye.